You're going to talk about the bonbons? No. Bon boy. Bon bon. bon, bon. bon oh, don't confuse me, Drew. <laughs> it's already confusing enough. All okay. right. This looks fine enough. Look at us in our Navy. I know. We both unintentionally got, matching. We, we got the memo this morning. Oh, How about great. that? Great. People I, really thought we matched on purpose last time. We both wore teal. Really? So I was like, oh, it's so cute how they decided they were going to match. I'm like, that's not what. They think we talk to each other more than we do. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I, 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 there was at least one person at the DC show that was like, I'm surprised you and Brian weren't hanging out more at the DC show. I'm like, why? We see each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, it's a weird divide and conquering because we wanted yeah, to yeah. talk to as many people as yeah, possible. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, you, well, you want to do a pen cast? Uh, yeah, you know what? We might as well. Got nothing right. better to do. That's not true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Not right now, we don't. All right. Welcome, everybody, to episode number 104 of the Goulet Pencast. Uh, we're Fountain Pens are still a thing. I'm Brian Goulet. I'm Drew Brown. And we're here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, extemporaneous, no, tangential and extraneous, oh boy, I got all mixed up, to del- 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 deliver the casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous, there we go, Fountain Pen Show, where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Pen Company and our Fountain Pen lives. That's it. I've done this 104 times. You think I would nail it by now? Not happening. In today's show, we're going to be talking about the best ceiling snap cap pens. Ceiling snap cap. That's right. Uh, Good pens to give to someone as a gift, especially if they're newbies, you know, some inexpensive pens. Uh, Our favorite pens for each season of the year. We're going to talk about inks that we would have expect to be named something differently based on what color it is. And we're going to be skipping a spotlight this week. But we got some personal shenanigans to share, so uh, let's get into it and kick it off with some feedback. Okay, the first one to feedback to us is not a single individual, but a multitude of people who corrected me on my very poor German. Your rotring? Yes, so um, as if Herr Hall from high school German wasn't disappointed in me enough mm. already having... Uh, past one of the three years of German that I took. Uh, <laughs> I, you took I, I just was so confident in me <laughs> mm. saying, here, I'll tell you what, Brian, it's actually German for red. <laughs> but no, I was wrong. Uh, they, they, um, there was a uh, unanimous uh, feedback that said your pronunciation of it more being roach ring. Roach ring. It's like some... To be fair, yeah. I was not super confident either because we've never carried the brand we've never talked to anybody i, I was but I, about it i forgot that you know i was a complete and miserable failure in german so i should have uh, just done the opposite of what my instinct was but well, anyway yeah rotring is closer to the german pronunciation than okay. rotring is okay um a couple of people said both would be fine most people said that my way was absolute <laughs> nincom poopy so well it, we'll just go with that fair enough um uh ken young ken young says wow Learn a lot more practical management tips and wisdom in doing business from this video than in paid courses that teach only theory. Thank you, Brian and Drew, for the insight and for Mark Dwight and for Mark Dwight for a humbling inspiration. Mm. These gave me new perspectives on life. Golly. All right. All right. So even a guy who- should be charging for these is what I took away from that. Yeah. Sounds like it's worth something. Okay. I'm kidding. It's not worth that much. <laughs> buy, buy, <laughs> buy some preppy O-rings from for us and we'll call it even. There you go. Um, and then my friend Oscar Medina says, hey guys, puce is French for flea. Did you read this yet? No, Good. I haven't don't, read this don't, yet. Don't listen. Okay, just, okay. just absorb I'll, this. I'll read it. I'll read it. The color was created especially to hide the fleas that flint that French gentry had upon them before the 20th century. So the true puce color is a dark brown slash purple. It was, it was I a, thought it was like a pale pink. Well, it, it evolved into a pale pink, but it's, oh. it's original color. And uh, Marinka also echoed this and says puce. The color puce is actually a deep purple, almost brown. Beautiful color, but the name isn't actually. Puce oh. means flea in French. The name of the color comes from the color a flea's belly turns when it's filled with blood after feeding. Oh. As if puce couldn't get worse. Puce even sounds gross. Right. It's, this is only making it worse. This yeah, is only this making is so it much the most, worse. And now it is unattractive on a historical level rather than just a <laughs> well, sur- surface level. To be fair, the color of fleas filled with blood is probably more of an like actual cargo short color. That's true. Like a dark brownish 
whatever. Yeah. More so than pink. So I'd probably actually be more into that flea puce color for cargo shorts. But when there was I, at least when one I, person when I said it, I was thinking pink. Yeah, there was at least one person that was wearing fused cargo shorts while they were listening to the pen cast. Get out of here! Yeah, that 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 is what was said. Whoa, yeah, that's so weird. I mean, you found them online pretty quickly. It was so when I searched for puce, I found nothing. Right, but when I searched for pink cargo shorts, it was just nasty with options. Yeah, so many. Yeah, so lousy many. with options. Lousy, yes. lousy and nasty and filthy with options. Pucey. Yep. Apparently someone else also said Gary Pusey when I said Gary Pusey, like at the same time. So there were a whole lot of wow. Puse related bits of nonsense last week. So uh, if you've never listened before, I'm sorry. This is, I mean, <laughs> never mind. This is about what you get. This is pretty. This can't be pretty, your first time watching this. Accurate. 104 episodes in, there's no way. Yeah, you know where I'm going to start? 104. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. What you All got? Right. All right, let's see here. I got one from Keith and Sarah, 2004. Well, I didn't think I would be spending my evening Googling Mike the Headless Chicken, but thanks to you guys, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm reading that he survived for 18 months <laughs> after losing his head being by being fed via an eyedropper. An eyedropper chicken, eyedropperable chicken <laughs> during the turkey hammock zone. It can only be the Gule pen cast where anything goes. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I thank you. Uh, wow, that's that's pretty spot on. Yes, I oddly enough, I was watching some random YouTube video as I'm known to do sometimes, and Mike the Headless Chicken came up since the last pencast organically. I didn't search for it. It was in some other video, and it was like the whole story of Mike the Headless Chicken. So yeah, apparently the reason he died is because they were like traveling around and like touring with this chicken. He was technically a rooster, actually, so wasn't a hen. But um, yeah, they were like feeding it with this like syringe eyedropper thing, and uh, they were traveling and they forgot his little syringe eyedropper thing, so he died because they couldn't feed him. So he could have lived longer. He could have lived longer. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah, they couldn't just like pour it down the hole. I figure wow. after eighteen months, they were the pros about how to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I don't wow. know. It's pretty weird. I could go into more detail about it, but it's he died of, of neglect, not of natural causes. I mean, when it's like solely your responsibility to feed them and clean them in this very weird way. I mean, they were trying to kill him in the first place. So like <laughs> the true. fact they kept him alive that long is kind of miraculous. Anyway, oh. too much info. All right. Pengi1227 says, I'm surprised Brian doesn't have a wood chipper. You could make so much mulch. Do you want to tell him? I do have a wood chipper. He definitely has a wood chipper. He actually has have, made so much mulch. I've made a lot of mulch. I actually have two wood chippers. I have a small, like, portable one that you can, like, cart around, but it's really just for, like, teeny yeah. little branches and stuff. I saw this comment. I'm like, maybe I should just tell him. Of course he has a wood yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to let Brian tell him. Yeah, he's hit, we, he's he's implored our team here. Hey, does anybody yeah. need to come get some mulch? Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I got some mulch. mulch. It's to the point where, like, I've because so, I have woods, too, so it's like, I guess the point where I have so much to chip, I'm like, I don't feel like chipping this. I'll just like dump it in the woods instead. Yeah, well, I mean, you just, just, you'd just be left with, you know, the just same chips. amount of wood in a different yeah. form. Well, I mean, if you chip it up and it breaks, you can break it down and like, it can break down into topsoil and stuff oh, like that. Okay. So like our compost, you can mix it into that. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I currently have a compost pile that's probably, I don't know, Two like stories. 10 yards in oh size. God. It's huge. And I have another one in the works too, because I started that one like l early last year. So it's like pretty well broken down. I've mixed dirt and soil and stuff with it. So it's like pretty rich, but still got some wood wood chunks in there. But then I have all the stuff I've mulched up this year so far. I didn't want to mix that into my my like more aged, mm. you know, mulch. Yeah, so it's it's its own pile set aside behind that. Yeah. I wonder what your, you know, tree line is going to look like in 20 years. It's, uh, you know, it's got a look to it because I have like dirt piles yeah. of like clay and dirt. And it's yeah. Rachel's like, is this like a, like a, what is it, uh, 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 like a mulch yard or like one of those like landscaping yeah, yards where yeah. they have all the piles of stuff. I'm like, it's kind of turned into that, by, that by accident a little bit, so. Brian's got piles. I got piles. Um, last bit of feedback here, Steve Copeland says, confession time, I've actually gone one step better or worse than Brian's log graves. Hey, talk about things outside. Mm -hmm. After taking down trees, I've been known to then dig up the stumps only to turn around and dig a different hole and bury them elsewhere. 
literally spending hours to take something that is already underground, to dig it up, and then move it to a different hole. That must be very fulfilling work. Um, no pun intended. Uh, this one is really hard to explain to my wife when she asks what I was doing outside on the tractor all day. Well, at least you have a tractor. That saves some time. Because let me tell you, taking stumps out by hand is way harder than you would think. Way harder. In fact, some of the greatest fail videos you can find on YouTube are people trying to remove stumps. Where they like tie- like with the truck? With, you name it, yeah. with everything. They like tie it to the bumper of their truck and they just drive like full speed and it just rips the back of their truck off and stuff like that. It's pretty silly. And it's like, yeah, that's not gonna work. Trees are very strong. Those roots go deep. Anyway, so I feel you, Steve. That's pretty funny. I Depending on the location of where the stump is, I could see that making sense. But you know, yeah, that is kind of that is kind of fun. Taking something that's already underground and putting it underground somewhere else. That that I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I haven't done that. But you get you get him. You get Steve. I like, get. I can see how you would get there. Yeah. I feel you, Steve. You're in good company. I do Steve, equally silly I things. Yep. Depending there you on. go. Anyway, cool. All right, we got some new stuff to talk about. So let's talk about new stuff. Okay. Uh, I only have one new stuff to talk about. Drew has another new stuff. So two new stuffs, technically, between us. Um, my new stuff is the Tachia Miyabi Bunbori Stardust Rotten Fountain Pens. That is a mouthful, but it's part of what you pay for because these are fancy pens. Uh, and I think you should get a fancy name when you buy fancy pens, I guess. Um, so these are, these are nearly $2,000 pens, which sounds like a lot. But if you look at them, they are actually look like they're cost should cost more than that yeah steel nib um, no yeah no these are get out of here drew <laughs> <laughs> you're messing with my head man i'm like it's hard not we so as as of when we're shooting this we don't even have this on the website yet but it will be there by the time this video publishes yeah. so i'm already like double triple guessing myself <laughs> on anything about these pens yeah. um but i know that i've seen them i first saw them in washington in, in the dc pen show um and I got to see all five of these in person and they were amazing. Yeah, so, I saw pictures and even the pictures blew oh, me away. Gorgeous, They're stunning. So these are these are all Rodden, Machia, you know, all kinds of st just lots of glitteriness, lots of totally different styling on each of these. Um, but it's all the Tachiya Miyabi model. So the Miyabi Empress is the big one, but then the regular Miyabi is a slightly smaller one. But it's probably like a you know, like a Sailor 1911 L size or yeah. like a custom 823, like about that size yeah, of I pen. Think, yeah, I think maybe slightly kind of larger, range. but you know, around Maybe a there. bit larger, yeah. but it's not a heavy pen. No. You know, it's 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 light, but it's a pretty good size. Yeah, I don't think there are brass innards with these. I don't think so. They feel they so. feel surprisingly light. I'm always surprised yeah, yeah. by how light they are. Yeah, but gorgeous pens. Um, and uh, so Tatya, they are doing 20 different limited edition pens to celebrate their 20th anniversary. And these I believe are the first five to kick off the 20. So they're making 20 pens each of 20 different, completely different styles of pens uh, for their 20th so anniversary. So 20 models and then 20 individual serial numbers yes. within those 20 models. Correct. So we have five of them. Um, they're going to be, I believe a limited release like exclusive to us for the time being. Yeah, I think we have a exclusive how launch window. Exclusive launch. So we're, but they they don't have a ton of these pens. So they're gonna like, they don't. It's not like they have all twenty of them ready to go because they take a lot of time to make. So they have a few of them. More are gonna trickle in. So if you see them on the site and then they go out of stock and then they come back, like they just know that that's kind of how it works. So um, just in case it happens to sell or whatever, if you still want one, sign up for the email list and then you'll be notified. But um, so we have five different ones: Twilight Shimmer. Lunar Prairie, Cherry Blossoms, Blue Daisies, and Aurora Glimmer, which many of these sound like My Little Pony names. They do. Uh, there's a phase, my kids aren't so much into it now, but there was a phase where there was lots of My Little Pony happening in the house to the point where I was like, you know how your kids get into stuff and you're like, well, I guess I better get into it too because otherwise I'll go insane. Yeah. So I will just choose to really like this thing. Yeah, I'm that way. It makes my life easier. My wife is not. <laughs> she will. She has really? a. She is very capable of not caring about mm. something for long periods of time. Wow, interesting. Yes. She's very, very. It's a gift. Oh yeah, it's super talented. Yeah. Um, anyway, so those are beautiful. 18 karat nibs. These are pretty good size nibs. Not like king of pen size, but the the like the mid size. These are, these are Tatcha nibs made by Sailor. 
um, but they're 18 karat nibs. So they're slightly different, but um, very high quality nibs. Yeah. They write great. Um, they feel really good. They're pretty bouncy and stuff. So I really like these nibs, but um, this is like the equivalent of like a 1911 L size, that mid-size sailor nib. Um, anyway, they look gorgeous and uh, you should go check them out just for eye candy, if nothing else. Yes, indeed. Drew. Speaking of Sailor, hey, we've got another set of Pro Gears. Um, and when I say mm. set, I mean we've got the Pro Gear Slim, the standard Pro Gear, and then the mm. Pro Gear King of Pens. So we've got okay. three sizes of the. Uh, that's not three. That's three. Three sizes <laughs> of this pen. It is called a Spring Sky, and it's a mm. lovely pinky, lavendery, purpley, multi-cap barrel situation. And we'll be looking at the Pro Gear Slim coming in at $236, the Pro Gear at $360, and the King of Pen at $880. So if you like the color, you've got three different options for you. So check that out. Mm. It's Pro Gear. It's got multiple colors. There you go. You probably know the deal. You probably know the deal. Different color Pro Gear. There we go. Awesome. All right, we got some Q&A questions, Drew. We do. Shall we? We shall. All right. All right. First question is coming from CC Likes Knives. Mm. And CC Likes Knives says, what are the best capping pens? What about the best snap capped pens? Mm. I've noticed that I'm not writing as much due to my tests and grading being on a computer. Mm. And I don't want my pens drying out between uses. Thanks oh. for the awesome content y'all make. Okay, so they're using snap cap pens, but maybe less frequently mm -hmm. due to technology. Due, due to the 21st century. Um, so they want something that's not gonna dry out. Okay, yeah. I'm glad there was that distinction and props to Drew for pointing out that distinction to me because as I have been known to do, I sort of half read the question and was thinking about snap cap pens that just like feel good yeah. and that I like. And I was like, oh, this is a very specific to like the the, function of the capping and the sealing, which is which is important. That's an important distinction. So I will say there are kind of two different ways to look at snap caps. You could think about like how securely does it snap, especially if you're gonna like carry it around, like in a notebook or something, you don't want it like pulling out or something like that. Most pens are kind of fine in that way. Um, less of an issue, but you know, when I think of pens like a Diplomat Arrow, I love the way that that feels, but the metal body's pretty heavy. And, you know, depending on how that thing is like rubbing around in your notebook or something, it's possible it could like disconnect or something. But, you know, thinking specifically really about the sealing of it yeah. for like ink drying out purposes, that is a helpful, helpful thing to go off of. So um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say this is probably not an exhaustive list because frankly, I just didn't have the time to go through like every well, single it's, pen. It's also that I could very think experience of, based. It like is. You, need, you need to think of pens that you have had inked up for a long time and were snap caps and they were fine over a long period of time. Yeah, and that's tough because I haven't used every snap cap pen in that way. No, like, and I, I think that's time. totally understandable. Most yeah, people haven't. Yeah, but there are definitely some that I can point to and you've maybe got some too. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think Platinum is really good at this. Um, we've mentioned this maybe even last week. Um, the Preppy, the Profante, the Plazier, uh, they all have... Um, pretty good, uh, you know, cap inserts with like some sort of spring in there or apparently even the slip and seal, which I was mistaken that it was only on the 3776s, but apparently it's on other pens too. So um, yeah, those will seal really well. So I would say those are a great place to start and especially they're very economical. Uh, so, you know, start with those. The Preppy, especially like for as much as that pen costs, it seals really well. Um, but the Profante is a little more like, I don't know, it's like a fancier version of it. I yeah. like that better. Um, and the Plazier is kind of like a jazzed up version, but it's the same It's the same grip basically on all those pens. So the, the nib, the writing experience will all be the same. Um, I think the Lamy 2000 is actually a great candidate. Shockingly that I rarely talk about that pen here, but um, the snap cap is pleasant, but it also seals pretty well. And you've got that hooded nib. So it stays pretty well wet, wettened. That's not a word. That's how you say it. It's, it's well wet and wetified. You know, so the the cap is not you know having to work as hard to keep that thing sealed up anyway. But um, so that's a contender. Uh, Traveler's pen, I think, actually does a really good job. The old carport pen. That's my carport pen. Yeah, you can put that in your Pew's cargo shorts and go dig up a stump and bury it in a different hole. Um, 
all of the layers of inside jokes I that know. we have now. Golly, it's um, <laughs> So Traveler's Pen is good. It's only a fine nib and it's kind of a pocket pen. So how comfortable would that be for like a desk pen? I'm not totally sure, but you didn't, you didn't say explicitly you're using this as a desk pen. I just assume that because you're talking about grading papers and stuff, but I don't know. I don't know how you use your pen. So you have options. Traveler's Pen would be a great pocket pen option. Um, Pilot E95S, I think would be great. You know, again, that's like more in Lamy 2000 territory. Um, you know, the, the Platinum Pens, the Traveler's Pen, those are more on the affordable side. Lamy 2000, E95S, those are gold nibs. They're a little more, you know, they're not they're not extravagant. But surprisingly, they're a little more of an investment. they all three happen to be the only pens that cap in that specific way with those little tension bars. Um, yeah, you're right. The Traveler's Pen does that. Mm, the Silvern might. That might be uh, the only one on that that you didn't do. Yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, th th that's it. Th that's three of, three of the four. Are those the only ones that do that? The, We've one, had... the only ones that we have, yeah. The, uh, let's see here. The Genhal 51A. I don't think that I don't that know has... we carry that anymore. We don't. Oh, maybe that to... was just friction fit. I think it was just friction. I don't think that had bars yeah, maybe in you're it. right. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it's an, interesting, it's an interesting type of capping. Uh, yeah. You know, I mechanism. think it's yeah. I think it's because it like you know it fits so tightly on. Yeah. So it's, it's not like, like those those are not. You know, we're considering them, we're considering them snap caps for the purpose of this question because yeah, they don't, we, we're assuming you just mean ones you just pull apart and push together. Yeah. You know. So that's what these are. They're just they're not locking in place due to a you know a snapping component that locks them in. Yeah. It's it's a it's a the, gradual pressure based thing that the then comes to a physical stop. The Lamy two thousand is a. Genuine snap. That cap. does snap. It's got those little dog ears on it yeah. and you can, it snaps. The E95S and the Traveler's Pen, I mean, if you close them fast enough, it'll make a sort of a snapping sound. Yeah, Lamy kind of does there's both. There's no snap mechanism that like is actually latching. Yeah, I think that the Lamy gets held in place by the little snappy doos, little dog ears, but yeah. is sealed. But it's got the bands on it too. Yeah, so it kind of grips yeah. with the bands and kind of stays in place with the little ears. Yeah. Great cap, yeah. great, really well engineered cap. Yeah, most snap caps, they usually have like some kind of indentation or something right around the grip before it gets to the to the nib. And then there's some kind of like, you know, tension mechanism way up in the cap that kind of grabs onto the edge of the grip of the pen. That's how most snap caps work. Um, but yeah, Lamy 2000 is unique with it. It has those little, those little ears. Um, all right, what else we got here? Um, I don't know if this qualifies. Pilot Vanishing Point? Is that a snap cap? It's a, it's a quick draw pen. You know, it's, it's not a threaded cap. It's not threaded, definitely. There's no cap that snaps. Right. But I mean, is that the best ceiling pen? I think it's good for what it is. Yeah. It's probably like more middle of the road in terms of like honorable mention. How yeah, it was an honorable mention. It's also just kind of I mean it's a it's a reliable pen. It's yeah. pretty convenient. So I thought I would mention that. Um and then I threw the pilot metropolitan in here too. Um it's always worked pretty well for me, but I, I don't think it's like the most outstanding in terms of sealing. I think it's it's very adequate, but I don't know that we'd consider it like exceptional, but it's yeah. also a very affordable pen too. Yeah. So in my experience, I've had better luck with the Kakano and the Explorer than the Metropolitan. Okay, fair but, enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, they're all the same. Yeah, and those are all use know. the same nib. So yeah. whatever whatever variation of pen of like that, they're pretty different pens. So whichever of those that you find more appealing, um, they would all work pretty well, I think. Yep. All right, what do you got, Drew? Uh, I wanted to mention the Varsity, Brian, because okay. while it's not mm. a fountain pen that you, we generally think of, uh, yeah. it is a fountain pen by mm. definition, mm -hmm. and that thing will stay. That won't. That thing will, won't dry out like in yeah. a long time. I've had desk Varsities at home mm -hmm. for about a year, maybe more, and they yeah. they still write just fine. Yeah, like it's insane. Like it's crazy how Varsity well. is such an underrated pen. It really is. It really it's, is it's got um, yeah. So that that's tremendous. So you can't go wrong with a Varsity. Mm -hmm. You know, granted we are generally not in this hobby to just write with Varsities, but it's there when you need it. I I keep my pens in my rickshaw pouch, and this goes with me everywhere. If I don't have it with me at home, I don't have a fountain pen. So I uh, do keep some desk drawer Varsities at home. So. Sometimes I have to use them, and I'm always surprised that they write as well as they do. And then I also wanted to mention the Twisby Swipe. Uh, that's a snap cap. It's Twisby's only snap cap, I think. And it, uh, I bought my son one, and he neglects it like a champ. 
and the Twisby Go, the snap cap as well. Twisby Go. Yep, yeah. there you go. Um, so I haven't, I don't have as much experience with the Go, but I will say that mm-hmm. Archer loves to ignore his swipe for many a month, <laughs> and it always, uh, always writes just fine. So yeah. it's been over a year now, and it finally dried out. So, but I'd say mm. it, it can hold, you know, uh, hold a charge, whatever. I don't know for a good three months or so uh, without yeah. writing. So. I would put a swipe there. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You're probably going to use your pen more often than that. Yeah. Yeah. Swipe's pretty good. All right. All right. Do you Um, want a question, Brian? Oh, no, no. I want a question. Give me a question. No, I'm going to give you a question. (sighs) You better get ready. I'm ready. This is from Dragon Absurda. Oh. All right. NLF, what does that mean? NLF one. Oh, if. Maybe it means if. Okay. Okay. There's an extra N in there. Hmm. Confuse me. I thought it was like an abbreviation, but no, I think the N is superfluous. All right. If one were to gift a friend an inexpensive starter pen to introduce them to the hobby, what pen would you recommend? And would you recommend including two or three ink samples and or a paper sampler with the pen as well? Well, you know what, Brian? This is not the first time we've gotten this question. Yeah. And it's never a bad one because people are always wanting to gift pens and it's never a bad time to talk about them. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but my opinions can sometimes change. So (laughs) currently, I will say what hasn't changed, we'll get that rolling here now, is my opinion of the this little duder right here, the Maruman um, Nemosine. I asked them at the pen show how to pronounce that because I was always like Nemosyne because it sounded like, because I know it's named after a Greek muse or something mm-hmm, like that. So mm-hmm. like, that sounds Greek to me. Yeah. Of course, just like uh, ro- Rotring, I was wrong about that. So it is Nemosine is what they Nemosine. Nemosine. So that's what they right. said at the table. So I'm going to trust them. Good. Maruman Nemosine. They make a top wire bound like what I just showed mm. you in a couple different sizes. That is always my go-to. I love their paper. I think it's the best. It's fun. The top wire bounds are so easy for me to use. That is my go-to gift paper. So we'll start with that. Okay. Um, and we'll start with inks because that's also a no-brainer for me because on our website, we have a Drew's top favorite inks in all colors package set. So whenever I'm gifting an ink, I'm just like, hey, here you go. These are already my favorites. So yep. great. It's easy. Um, I did make that list before we started carrying buttered popcorn, Brian. So my yellow oh, in that list do is. Do you need to alter it? No, I don't think so because Roar and Klingner Helianthus. What's on, what's on your list anyway? I don't yeah, remember. Helianthus is a fantastic yellow. So I don't. I, I completely still agree with choosing Helianthus. It's great. Um, second only to buttered popcorn. I oh, got a bunch of inks on here. Jeez. But well, it's it's one of every color. It's from that video that I did. Okay, so, right. Yeah. And yeah, it's based Helianthus on- this was your yellow, yeah. right. So it's based on like all of our, uh, would you re- fil- our color so filters. Would you replace that with buttered popcorn? Yeah, then? absolutely. Wow, okay. Yeah. Heck yeah. So anyway, um, that's my ink. So yeah, that's my opinion. It's, cool. It's there for purchase. Pen wise. So- um, a, lot, a lot of options here. Yeah, we definitely do. So my, I, I will like to ask some clarifying questions because it depends on the type of person you're buying it for. There are people who just think fountain pens are antiquated and dumb and don't have any purpose. If if you're just trying to like prove that like, hey, they're not that bad, get them a varsity. Like that, if that's what you're trying to do, yeah. just to kind of like make a point, like they're fine. You don't even have to do anything. Here's a varsity, right? It's yeah. fine. Just write it like a normal pen. Exactly. If just you're don't trying hold to... it in some crazy way. Just hold it so right. that the nib is up. And you're it's like a, it's like a practice pen. Yeah. You know, it's like a, a blunt edge sword. So mm. just to, you know, prove to them that it, yes, it is that simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. So a varsity is good for that. You know, obviously there's above that. Um, if we, you're, we like it, we like it to be more complicated. Yeah, than exactly, that. absolutely. We do. <laughs> we don't make our money on the varsity. Um, but if you're trying to show that they're simple and reliable, my recommendation would be a pilot Kakuno. So those are easy. They're durable. They're not the flashiest in the world, obviously. They're only 14 some bucks. They cap reliably, as we mentioned, and they write fantastically well. They have the same nib feed writing experience as the 60 plus dollar Pilot Prera. So you're getting a deal as far as the writing experience goes. You're just getting it packaged in, you know, a delivery system that is made to be very, very affordable. So mm-hmm. Akakuno is one of my favorite recommendations if you're trying to show like, hey, here's how you plug in a converter, here's how you plug in a cartridge. You know, it doesn't even come with a converter. So it comes with a cartridge, but it's got enough to get you started right there in the package. Mm-hmm. It's user friendly. That That's kind of like my bare bones mm-hmm. go-to if you want the whole like, you know, liquid ink refillable experience, you know, one step above the varsity. Do you think it's better to encourage someone new 
to start with cartridges and then get into converter and the it, bottled ink and all that? Like, do you think that makes the barrier a little lower to start? I, I I have found that when I have been gifting pens to my friends and family, uh -huh. that has been the case. Okay. But with those types of people, they're not like, they, they have a passing curiosity in what I do for a living. Right. And so I'm like, well, here you go. Here's- They're not like committed to right. learning the actual like, Exactly. So that process. those are the people that mm -hmm. a Varsity or a Kakuno would be good for. However, if I find a friend who has a you know similar interest mm -hmm. than I do, if I if I'm talking to somebody about like boots or knives or razors or watches mm -hmm. or retro gaming or record collecting, if I'm if I'm in the nerdosphere, yeah, then I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to say you have a proclivity mm. of rabbit holiness. So we're going to yeah. give you a Twisby swipe because the Twisby mm. swipe comes with a bunch of options. It comes with a big honking cartridge with a lot of ink in it. Mm. It comes with a standard twist converter for you to use ink with. It comes with a crazy fun push button springy converter for you to use all packaged into a nice resealable little white box. The presentation is nice. It just has a lot going on for it. And you presenting that to somebody is intriguing. It's fun to unwrap and look at all the little parts and stuff and give them the option. Hey, you could do this, you could do this, or you could do this. Built in, you've got three options right there. Mm -hmm. And then if you gift them a Twisby bottle of ink too, that has been my go-to recently, Brian, is the Twisby 70 mil bottle, 60, 70 the big mil. one, yeah. Yeah, the standard one, because that's the one that has the um, cup in it. So it's uh, easy to refill. You're a sucker for that cup. I, well, as far as gifting, yeah, absolutely. I want to make it easy yeah, for folks. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want them to get all messy and and have a hard time and get, you know, did I go far enough? Oh no. If the cup is there, you can very clearly see true. how deep it's going. Um, you can avoid getting ink on your fingers and saying like, I don't like this, you know? So that's my go-to, a swipe and a Twisby bottle of ink. <laughs> the presentation's really nice, the boxes yeah. and stuff. It's great for giftability. Hmm. So there we go. That's that. That's, that's my that because I've, I've done this recently too, so that that's kind of what I've settled on. You've probably gifted more pens to other people than I have, even. and I have failed on every occasion. Really? Yeah. Most Nobody recent, most sucked? recent one, I um I gifted a uh, uh, five eighty iris and a bottle of ink. Um, that's a but, legit pen. Well, this person already had a Jin Hao. Okay, and, so they're familiar with the process, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I we identified that this person already had that, and then we we're like, yeah. well, we could do you one better. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was done, yeah. but, uh, I like that. I like that approach. I, you, what, I like everything you said, so I'm not going to elaborate too much. Um, you know, for me personally, I think it really depends kind of like you said, it depends on how invested the person is in learning the fountain pen like process. You have to gauge that. Yeah. Cause you know, it's like anything else. If I have somebody that's like really into whatever their hobby or thing is, if they're way more into it than I am and they like want to tell me everything about it, I'm like, I don't have room in my life to absorb another hobby, you know, then I'll just be like turned away altogether. Yeah. But if there's like a very simple way to try it out, I'm like, oh, cool. It may not go any further than that. But, you know, you might be like, oh, this is I kind of get it now. I'm curious to learn more. You know, it's kind of that gateway like to get further into it. So I'm a big fan of don't 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 go deeper than the person's ready for even though that can be hard because we all tend to get very excited about our stuff. Um, it's okay, out over time, it'll happen if it's meant to happen. Um, I'm like you, I've given a lot of things to f family and I don't really have as many friends, so that doesn't happen as much. <laughs> I just work all the time. Um, so yeah, my family and stuff like that. And I've had mixed success. You know, I've mentioned before here, like my mother-in-law, I tried to get her into it. It was a bit to manage, but then she actually, you know, I, I gave her a Metropolitan and that was, you know, she just had a hard time keeping up with it and stuff like that. But then she, you know, I was like, okay, well, she still liked what it had to offer, but just the maintenance and, and stuff like that was a bit more than she wanted to deal with. So I gave her varsities and that's like fits every criteria in her life. And she just is a varsity like loyalist now. So I probably should have started there and that would have saved her from some frustration. She probably never would have needed to go beyond that, but Hey, you never know. Um, and then my sister, you know, got her into some stuff. She's got a couple of decent pens. She's got like a, a platinum modern Machier with that like 18 karat nib oh, yeah. that's really good. She loves that. Um, she's got a couple different pens. Um, I do have another friend that got really, really into the stuff. 
Um, and so, yeah, I guess I have had some success, but again, it's always a matter of just easing into it. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Varsity for that reason. I think the Rodia number 16 pad is like a great gift because everybody's familiar with like a legal pad format. A full size pad is like a bit much, like it's fine if you're at like a desk and all that, sure. But that that A5 size pad, it's perfect to keep it like in your kitchen or, you know, on your nightstand or something just to use it. And, and everybody's got some need, like not everybody has the need for a journal necessarily that feels like a commitment, but a tearaway pad that you can just write grocery list or you can leave a note for your you know, family or something like that. Everybody can use that. So I'm a big fan of the Rodia. It feels, the paper itself feels a lot like the Maramon. So it's a great experience. I think the Maramon's great for like a carry around. Like you're not going to carry around an A5 Rodia pad, probably, especially not like in your pocket or in your purse or something. Probably not. You know, maybe in your backpack. But um, so, but I like, for me personally, the Rodia is a great consistent introduction into what nice paper feels like without it being too much to kind of grab onto if you're new, and you know? You could also go with the number 16 top wire bound. Um, yeah, that, that's sure, That's become my personal favorite. It was okay. the 16 dot pad, um, yeah. but now it's the 16 dot wire bound. Okay, that's good for, again, that's especially better for, for traveling. Like, for portability. Yeah. And you technically you get better use out of it because you can use both sides of it, whereas the the regular pad, you yeah. can sort of use both sides. It's like it's a not, dollar more, it's really but I think for. it's worth it. Yeah, so that's a great option too. But I would say the 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 tearaway, the top staple bound pads are by far more popular. It's, I think it's because the it's, only just, it's a format that I know. It's a, yeah, it's a format that everybody's familiar with, and I like the dot grid. The dot grid is by far the most popular. Definitely. Um, but ruled is is also a pretty safe bet as well. I think it's a seven millimeter ruling on the A5 size, Rodi, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so pretty good. It's like a college ruling size. So pretty good all around. Um, yeah, and then you know as far as giving ink samples and stuff like that, again, if you know that they have some experience with fountain pens, or if they're like really expressing a lot of interest in it. But otherwise, if they're totally new to it, you know, you're kind of like, not only like here, here's how you have to fill and clean your pen, but now you have to do it from this weird little tiny vial and you have to explain all that. And then they're not gonna know the brands of ink and stuff like that. They're not gonna have like a bottle shape or anything or like any like design stuff to go off of for that ink. They're just going off a sample with a name. It's gonna be really hard for them to remember what that sample is. So I'm not saying you shouldn't go that route, but you know, gauge gauge their interest. That's why I like the varsity route because it's already preloaded with ink. And then you give a paper pad and you're in what? Less than 10 bucks yeah. for that. And you can pretty much give them the whole experience. So that's pretty good. Um, but for me personally, if, I've, if somebody's like expressed a lot more interest, I will usually go with um, the Rodeo 16 pad. You know, I have a lot of like business associates that I do networking with and stuff like that. Um, and you know, a lot of them have whatever interests that they're into. Um, so they kind of get, they get the, the fountain pen thing enough. Um, so usually if I go to like a networking event of some kind and I'm using fountain pens and they, they naturally take an interest to it and they're asking about it, I let them try it. And if they're really into it, I will urge them to go with like a Twisby Eco or a 580. Um, and you know, it's nice because the pens are very demonstratory. They look really good. They're affordable for what they are, but you can see what's going on in the pen. And it's a little easier, I think, for people to grasp what's happening in the pen because you can see so much of it, you know? Um, and then there's lots of good videos and instruction and stuff like that. So that one's a good go-to. So I'll give I'll give the Twisby Eco and then usually a bottle of like Arosha Zuku is pretty good to go with. Nice looking bottles, you know, the ink is, good all around so i have i've i've kind of honed that over the years to be like good and I, I get pretty good adoption you know of actually using it from the people that i've given those little sets to so there you go but curious to what y'all have had success with if you have tried to gift stuff to whoever whether it's someone in your family or maybe a friend at work or a client or a professor, a student, whatever. Um, curious what you all have had, like actual success of giving something, they appreciate it and use it. And, you know, uh, that could be different than just like, here's a fancy looking pen for a graduation or something. And then it just goes in a drawer. I'm curious what, what experiences y'all have had. So 
That's it. All Stop right. Stop talking. Mm, following up, what is this, number three, four? Number three. Number three. Number three. Dan Multi Productions says, hmm. both your favorite fountain pen for each season. Well, Mr. Multi Productions, um, I got to be honest here. I give zero thought in my life to pens based on season in terms of what I actually use. We think about it a lot in terms of, you know, our, our company and like photographing. Yeah, and sending marketing. E emails, marketing, you know, yeah. Cause like seasonality is, it's a nice thing to talk about and lean into and it's yeah. very visual, you know, that's that's really cool. But you as a as a user of the products. Yeah, I'm yeah. really not. And it, that's not just in fountain pens, that's in basically everything in my life. I'm I'm lucky if I remember what month it is let alone the season. Right. So I don't like dress differently really no, you don't. based on the season. <laughs> I'm a very like function over form for most areas of my life. Yeah, and you are a cargo shorts until the bitterness of winter type of guy. Yeah, and then it's like- And even then- All right, it's jeans time. Yeah. And then it's like jeans until yeah. it gets too hot and then it's shorts again. Yeah, so I'm not the best example of that, but I did give it some thought of like maybe what I would suggest or you could lean into. So I don't know. I don't have the best deepest advice on this one, but I'm happy to share my thoughts. Um, so starting off with winter, I chose the Lamy 2000 because it's gray and bleak, there just we go. like winter. <laughs> okay. I hate to call it a Lamy 2000 bleak, but design wise, it's, it's minimal. It's very, it's very, yeah. you know, just like winter. You know, everything's kind of dead. It just kind of looks gray everywhere, you know? So, Lamy 2000 fits right into that. Yeah, we go. You know? Um, of course, I love the Lamy 2000, so I can poke fun at myself with that a little bit. Um, actually, winter, I, I, you know, it's interesting. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a tangent here. But my kids ask me all the time all these random questions. And Ellie's been asking a lot, like, what's our favorite season? It's really changed for me over the years, especially recently with as much like time as I spend outside. I used to, of course, as a kid, I love summer because you don't have school or whatever. Yeah. And then it kind of evolved into loving spring because like the days were getting longer, it's getting warmer, stuff like that. Me and Rachel's birthdays are both in the spring, so that's more exciting. Now birthdays are like mm, not as much of an appealing thing. Uh, and spring is when all the bugs come out and we have so many bugs. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. So spring what is, it? is maybe not my favorite. I think, I think autumn is now my favorite. I love the changing of the leaves. You know, where we are at least, I mean, I know every season is different depending where you are in the world. Um, but here in Virginia, we get a pretty well-rounded four seasons. Um, I like autumn because I love leaves. I love blowing leaves, not like raking leaves, but I'm, you know, we have woods around the edge of our yard. So I just get to blow them into the woods and I don't have to pick up any leaves. Yeah. That's why I like it. That was partly by design. Do you still use the, the big blower attached to the wheels that you drag around the yard? I've used that for sure. Nice. I don't use it like on the regular, but you know, if time goes by and I've got a good enum good amount of leaves, yeah. Ellie's really into blowing the leaves off the driveway now. She like lo is looking forward to it. I don't know, we've had a bunch of, we've had so little rain here recently in Virginia that like we've got trees that are dropping their leaves already in like late August. Um, now we've gotten some more rain and all that, but we've just been so dry here. So we got some leaves that are already falling and it's like fake fall and then it got nice and cool. But then this weekend it got up to like almost 100 degrees and it was blazing hot again. So I don't know, it fluctuates a lot. I digress. Spring, uh, I know it's pretty normal to have like pastels and stuff like that. Spring, you know, Easter, whatever. I'm personally not into pastel very much. Um, I went with the Pilot Custom 74 teal. I love that color. Beautiful color. Teal, I don't know, you could argue, is that a summer color? Is that a spring color? I don't know. I think of spring when I think of teal. teal. Up to interpretation. Yeah. Turquoise maybe is a little more summery, but could also be spring. I don't know. It's whatever the heck. They don't have any official colors. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. Maybe they do, and I'm just not aware. I'm really bad when it comes to like interior the seasons design. Have not, the seasons stuff. have not spoken to us and yeah. let, them, let us know of their wishes. But it speaks to others more. So please let me know if I'm way off the mark on any of these. 
Um, summer, I really went right for the jugular. Um, I did the Banu Euphoria Watermelon Mojito. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, we're a little biased because we designed it. But, uh, I mean, when I think of summer, I think of watermelon. And I don't know, that pen just screams summer to me. Yeah. Um, and then for fall, I went with a Diplomat Arrow in orange, that like burnt orange color, put a nice like maroon or a brown ink in there. And it's like, hmm, fall. That fall's, was my first thought Fall's too. happening. Yeah. I changed it, but that was the my arrow? first thought. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you had, you even put your notes in there first. Yeah. Yeah. I did not look at your notes when my, I put my, mine in there. That was my first thought, but then I went in a different okay. direction. All right. All right. You put more thought into yours. You have more notes. So I would love to hear. I can, have I have an opinion on everything pretty much. <laughs> um, so. My, my th- mostly things that don't matter as much absolutely if it doesn't matter <laughs> i will give you a much bigger opinion about it if it okay. does matter i'll be like hey you know i'm cool with whatever okay um all right so i'm gonna start with uh with winter because it is the only season that i actively do pick my pens according yeah you kind of do i don't really care about any other season but winter is by far my favorite always has mm. been my favorite always will be my favorite okay. summer can just go to well that's because you, you choose to wear pants year round defying all logic and reason it doesn't defy reason if you don't go outside well okay fair enough you have to go outside sometimes though. i know i hate it anyway uh winter obviously my go-to in the past i've inked up a blue uh, sorry a green and a red lamy all-star both in 1.5s with green and red ink and i've just made that my festive hmm. pen pairing okay uh in years past though i acquired a Pilot, uh, sorry, Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Christmas Pudding. So mm. that has been my Christmas pen. So that is going to continue to be. But if you wanted to talk about a winter pen that we do carry, I want to mention, uh, I'm going to be predictable and say the Visconti Mirage Mythos in Apollo. Because to me, when I am, I'm going to discuss, you know, with winter and summer anyway, if I am in the cold, I want to be thinking cozy and that brown Apollo with the satin gold hardware to me just feels cozy. It feels like hmm. it's not too shiny. Like that that that's too formal for me. I want I want I want a little bit more matte feeling. I want some mm. browns. Make me think of like a rustic cabin or something like that. Okay. So that okay. The, the Apollo gives me those vibes, and that that's what I go for when I'm looking for winter vibes, Brian. See, I think more of an autumn with like a darker brown like that. But I get what you're saying. Oh, We'd it's like good for that. any time of year. But yeah it, it, yeah, it exudes cozy to me, and that's where I want to be when it's cold. It's like the chestnuts roasting yeah. on the fire. Yeah, for me, I don't want thing. a light blue pen for winter that's too cold like i'm already i don't want to be outside in winter like Mm. i want to be inside and cozy you know i don't want to be reminded that it's cold outside okay that's Um, fair that's fair like the banu uh, vodka on the rocks no no i don't want it's like a like now we will have schwarzenegger uh ice uh what's the guy mr freeze oh god yeah that's what i think of in the the, the, the vodka on the rocks yeah (laughs) So, um, for spring, I also don't dig past the colors. Some ice. Oh God, that, that was that was a, that was oh, the, yeah. yeah that was a good one. Oh, that so terrible. Anyway, <laughs> what killed the dinosaurs? <laughs> the Ice Age. <laughs> uh, okay, for spring, I also don't dig the pastel colors. Uh, so. <laughs> I haven't thought about any of this in so oh, long. Oh, oh my I, gosh. Wow. It's, it's all upsetting. Oh, man. Um, so I don't want pastel colors for spring. Uh, and I wanted to go with like a stormy, rainy sort of deal with spring. That's one of my favorite things about the spring. Okay. Um, so hmm. I went with the Delta Duna in reflex gray because it looks very stormy mm. to me, but with a hint a of, bit of clear blue. blue. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. the skies are blue, but sometimes a little bit stormy. You know, mm. you got your uh, April, okay. April showers and all that. Yeah. So I went with that. And also you could go ahead and pair that with Robert with Robert Oster Thunderstorm and just really theme that to the mm-hmm. T. Mm-hmm. And then for summer, let's get it straight. I hate the summer. I hate the heat. I don't want to think about the heat. Mm. I don't want your orange pen. I don't want your red pen. I don't want your yellow pen. Get that out of here. I don't want to be thinking about the heat in summer. I'm not so going to theme you, a summer pen. I want it cold. I want it blue, icy, something. That's I want not to, what it is. That's where I, that's what I, if I'm, if I'm in the summer, I'm writing with a pen that is seasonal. I want to think cool. I want to think cold. That mm. that that refreshes me. I don't want to remember that it's hot outside because that sucks. So, I thought you give me the eco heat 
I'm giving it I'm right sensing back. Sensing a theme here. Uh, you, you basically take don't your, like being outside. You can take your eco heat. <laughs> you don't want the cold in the winter time, but you don't want the heat in the summer. I would much time. rather take cold. I just don't. I just, for me, the feeling here. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you this: when you walk, it, one of the most pleasant feelings about the summer and the winter is okay. walking into a building that is either hot or cold. Right? The 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 feeling you get when your body comes out from the cold into a warm environment that, that 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 chill you get on your back mm. oh my god that's that is a delightful experience that's what i want with my pens my pens are here for me they're my friends they're my buddies mm. they're here to comfort me brian and i want my winter pen to provide me that you know fireside cabin feel mm. and i want my summer pen to provide me that ice cold lemonade sort of uh feel like something okay. that is going to save me from the oppressive heat not remind mm. me oh here's a hot orange and yellow like no <laughs> I got that out there. I'm, I'm ready for yeah. solace and respite now. Okay. So I'm going to go with, uh, so I wanted to mention the Visconti Homo sapien in Earth Origins. Mm. Uh, the water version is very, very refreshing to me. Mm. It's light blue and dark blue. Okay. It looks like beautiful water, just mm. cool, clear, comforting water that will save you from the oppressive, terrible <laughs> summer. Um, but also, if we wanted to save a couple bucks, I think the Blue Eco. So it's uh, mostly clear, mm. obviously, but the knob and the cap are in a nice transparent blue yeah. that looks kind of icy. I like that. And, but like not that not pattern. like not like straight up ice. It's dark enough to make it feel like just a really cool, cool blue. Yeah. So that to me is comfortable in the summer. I yeah, like I riding with that. that one. Feels like you're riding with ice, mm. and I dig that. Okay. So um, yeah, there are some. Tropical colors like the uh, Homo sapiens in Polynesia, uh, mm -hmm. but that's too tropical. That's too outside. <laughs> I don't want that. It looks nice because it's light blue, right? But it's still no things. Things that are tropical make me think of outside tropical, and that's not where I want to be. You're even dugging on tropicalness. Yeah, I am. That's like universally like the most you know what pleasing I'm, of environments to be in. Tropical sounds great if I'm inside of the all-inclusive resort that it is a oh part of. That sounds great when we are the wherever the buffet is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, 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 no. In all seriousness, I, I would very much love to go somewhere tropical. I just, you know, I'm not going to be spending my money on that. Fair enough. Um, all right. And then finally for fall, uh, it would be easy to say orange. So I wanted to, you know, instinctively go with that. Which to be fair, you did before I stole it. No, 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 no. I didn't write it down. Oh, um, you didn't? No, oh, I never okay. did. I, I, okay. I thought oh, about gosh. that, but then went in a different direction. Okay. So I wanted to go with the Custom 74 in Grenadine hmm. because I recently rediscovered that color when I was talking about my um, favorite pens in every color. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is such a delightful red. Mm. And it is a true red, as true red as yeah, you can yeah. get while still being pleasant. There are some bright, mm reds that just don't leave you feeling very comfortable or safe. Yeah. Mm. And then there are reds that are nice, but lean very much burgundy. Right. And the grenadine, I think, stays a true red, but still doesn't come across as like severe. It's like a garnet red. It is. It's a like beautiful it's ruby. Too, yeah. yeah. The problem with maroons is they can get so like leaning brown. Right. I'm like, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Are you even red though? Like, so, but mm -hmm, this one stays mm -hmm. red. And w my favorite uh, leaf colors are in in the autumn are the ones that are just bright 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 yellow or bright 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 red okay and i think i really like to see the red like when you're driving yeah. down the freeway and you see one just straight up red tree yeah that looks really striking. oh man yeah so cool you you or, or a straight up yellow tree i think those are the mm -hmm. two ones because you see all the in-betweens yeah but when you see that bright bright yellow or that bright bright red mm. so in this case i'm going to go with that bright bright red feeling because i just love when i see that red tree yeah it That's reminds cool. me of a Japanese maple a little bit as well mm -hmm. with the red leaves. Yeah. So here we go. Custom 74 and Grenadine for my fall pen. Very cool. Nice list. Yeah. All right. Same thing, y'all in the comments. Let us know what you think too. Because clearly we're not like super committed to any nah. of these. We just kind of thought it. But, you know, what do you think? Especially like do you actually change out your pens for the seasons? I'm curious how many of y'all actually do that. So let us know. I change out my pens all the time, so it's not hard for me to. Yeah, I'm like using seasonal. I'm using random stuff all over the place. So, yeah. cool. All right, Drew, I got a question for you. Hi, wide and handsome ass. Which inks would you have expected to be named differently based on their color, and which ink names had you expecting a different color that it ended up being? 
this is an interesting question. It is an First time we've question. ever gotten anything like this. So uh, we, we hmm. get a lot of different versions of kind of the same question, but this one was like, whoa, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. This, is, this is new. Um, so I got to really spend some time in my brains. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, the first thing that popped into my mind was the first ink that I was ever just really surprised at what it was. Because I remember I was in the garage and I mm. spilled this ink all over my hands when I was ink sampling. Okay. And it was Noodler's Hellfire. Yeah. And it was straight up neon pink. Yeah, it's pretty bright pink. I'm like, this is not Hellfire. I've What do you think of with Hellfire? What would you what would you think Hellfire should be? I, like fire in general. Like fiery orange. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that I've never I have not ever seen I would think any of like sort a, of like a reddish orange. I've never seen any sort of underworld scenario <laughs> that had pinks in it. Pink, yeah, yeah, there was in, in no depiction in comic or television or movie form. Has it ever been pink down there? So Fair enough. I'm guessing, so that one always caught me off guard. Yeah. Um, and then you could also say Noodler's Turquoise of the Maces is not really turquoise, but also turquoise, that whole genre of color is very, yeah. uh, is all up for debate anyway. So Anything in the turquoise teal kind of family? Yeah. Anybody lot, could argue. It's mostly light blue though, that particular turquoise. Yeah. But anyway, what I really want to talk about, and this will come as no surprise to you, mm-hmm. is the Monteverde Jungle Collection. Oh yeah, like that one. Well, for me, it was like the the sweet both. I have sweet life. I have yeah. both those. So I saw sweet, you had those in there. Sweet, I didn't. Yeah. Sweet life and jungle. So we sweet need life. Like, we need to iced, talk about some iced of these. cookie is like a teal color. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. what? It's crazy. So, they're great colors. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great inks. But <laughs> so we have a few of these left. Most of them have been discontinued and the box sets have been discontinued. But I wanted to just mention in Monteverde's jungle ink set, there was an elephant ink that was purple, a zebra ink that was blue, a turtle ink that was a light blue, and then giraffe that was an, like an ancient copper, like a rusty orange red. Now, that one's not as distant because giraffes are orangey. But um, not really, they're more tan. And no, brown. they are. They are. I was trying to. Really? You, no, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. no, it is a stretch, but like not and as. Their tongues are purple. But it it's closer than the blue zebra is. Yeah, the but, zebra so one I don't get at all. That was madness. Now I love the look of giraffe. I think that's actually pretty underrated ink. Um, it's a, it's a really beautiful ink. Most of them are great ink colors. It's but, just so so discombobulated. That was with the crazy. Names. Now yeah. I would expect. Elephant to be gray. I would expect zebra to be like a tan, maybe a light orange or something. Um, Cause like cartoon giraffes are usually a light orange. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Like Jeffrey from Toys R Us, you know, he was orange. Um, RIP. Yeah, I know. Uh, a turtle, I would expect that to be green. Like Ninja yeah, Turtles. It's green or like a olive color. Zebra, I don't know what I would expect a zebra ink to look like, but not blue. Black? Anything, yeah, <laughs> not blue. Not white, but. So, Can't do white, so and then black. on top of that, you've got Monteverde's Sweet Life collection, which included hits like Brian's Iced Cookie, which is teal. Now, granted, you can it's a ice, great color. You can ice any color. I get that. Yeah, but I've never like, seen a teal cookie. As far as if if um, High Wide and Handsome is asking me which surprised me, that one surprised me. I didn't I didn't hear Ice Cookie and think teal. So I don't know. Um, and then finally, of that same collection, birthday cake in the Sweet Life collection was purple. There are lots of birthday cakes out there. I would say that plenty of them are purple, but not most of them. I haven't seen a lot of them myself. I don't think I have seen any. But I'm intrigued, though. I would eat a purple cake. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Most of the time, like, I'll see white, maybe blue, yellow. Mm. Brown, I don't know. Not not purple. Yeah, chocolate cake would be brown. Not purple yeah. though. Okay. Purple is interesting. Yeah, that is. And and then there was the uh, there was blue velvet cake that surprised me. But I mean, there, it is blue. There is a blue velvet cake out there that exists. I've it never just, had a blue velvet cake. Is I, that really a thing? I googled it. Yeah, there's. Is there, it like red velvet, just blue? Very colored? very blue. I mean, that's cool. I think red velvet's just died. Like it's just yeah. You can use it's, whatever. You, it's chocolate cake with cream cheese. You can icing. make whatever. You can make it whatever color you want, I think. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, there's that. I will also say that Diatramentus has some document inks that are listed as dark red, dark green, and dark blue. Uh, they're not that dark. I was surprised by those. They're, they're, they're just kind of regular. They're darker than I think their counterparts, but still not that dark. Um, speaking of not that dark, platinum blue black, Brian, yeah. Uh, I haven't put it's this in. Dark. I haven't put this in front of me in years. But mm-hmm. on our swab shop, the blue black is not as dark as the pigmented blue. 
So that it's a very light blue black. Yeah. Yeah. So that that kind of surprised me as well. Um, and then Platinum has their classic inks, which are Iron Gall inks, and all of them have the word black in there, like citrus black. Uh, the, the the name having black in there would leads well, me to they, believe they're darker than they are. So they um, get there. They get there. They get Those darker. The, they do darken up. But yeah. they don't, but like not enough to have black in the title to me. Like they get darker. They go down really light and when they dry, they're darker. But like, you know, the, they have black in their name. And that just, to me, that makes it sound like they'd be like, you know, much darker than they are. And they're just not. Some I feel are like not. that was a thing, like calling it blue, black, red, black, green, black. You know, there's a lot of things that was just a dark version of that color. They yeah. called it that color black. But the platinum ones, like the citrus black, like that's just not, you wouldn't consider that a dark ink at all. Well, I mean, it goes down. I know I know exactly what yeah. you mean, but it does darken up. It's it does like, darken up, but it's like not that a dark color, ink. That color more than most other, because it's an iron gall, like more than most others will darken up after like a week or so. Yeah. Even overnight. Right. So I, I get it, but. I, I kind of like. What would you call it? Citrus gray? Just citrus. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like just and there's like cat cas what what's C A S S I S? Is that Cassie? Cassie? Cassie. 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 Well, what are you talking about? Like in what the, the red. It's like a red color. C A S S I S. I took two years of French and you think I should know, but I mean I failed a German I last week, it. so anyway, I'm, that, I'm not confident that, about that it. red color, like it, there's that black too. Cassis black. Um, and it's it's just a. It's, I want to say it's cassis. It's red, but it's not like it's I don't not. Think it's you say the it, second it's still not as dark as like a burgundy, but it's called cassis black. Or you know, I'm like, eh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. So that's just my opinion. I expected them to be darker than they were. That's it for me. Do you have anything you want to talk about there? You know, I've like been looking through all these colors. You mentioned a lot of the good ones. I was trying to find something beyond those, and. I don't have any really really strong ones. The only ones that I get thrown off of. Basically, I can't keep any of the Ferris wheel press colors straight. No, you know. Because the names don't always match up to what the color would be. Yeah. You know, like now it's at this point where it's like, if the, if we hear they're introducing a new color, we're like, I have to see it. I right. can't I can't make any guess as to what color that might be. Yeah. Some of them are, are more obvious than others. Yeah, you know, like, like turbulent tiptoes. Right. <laughs> That sounds made up. It is. Okay, good. I failed miserably when we did this <laughs> test before, so you, I'm pretty gullible in this way. Um, but like buttered popcorn, mm. like that one, you that can one pretty well imagine what it's going to look like. Yeah. Their but, standard line, I think, is a little more indicative, yeah, but yeah. all these the special fairy, editions the fairy could fairy be- fairy tales ones and all that is could like- Could be anything. Anybody's guess. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Like it doesn't it, have to be. It is, but it's kind of, to me, it makes it kind of like Sailor Ink Studio where- like I don't. That remember, was the next thing I was going to mention. I don't remember any of them. I can't remember a single no color because I need I need that connection. Yeah, there is a, there is somewhat of a like matrix grid logic to the Ink Studios. Rachel has explained it before. I've forgotten it altogether, but it has to do with like somewhat of the shade of color being like the front number and then the back number being like the hue or something like that. I can't remember what it is, but there's a logic to it. But still, it's a lot to try to remember. So, yeah, that was it. You mentioned a lot of the good ones. I didn't have anything other specific colors other than, yeah, Ferris Wheel Press and Ink Studio. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, if you all have more questions for us, please let us know. You can email us at pencast at gulaypens.com, especially if you're an audio listener, or you can leave us comments on the YouTube video, and we will be happy to check them out. I'll read every single one of them, I promise. There you go. All right. We are going to be skipping a pen spot like this week. We it's honestly, it's a holiday week for us. We had Monday off with Labor Day. So we had to really compress our preparation time. So we didn't we didn't do a pen spotlight, but you know, we'll look at it again next week. Um so we're gonna jump right into what's happening. Tell you what, Brian. Oh. Guess what? You calling an audible on me? Uh no. Well kinda, yes. Mm. I didn't pick an an ink to uh, give a give a freebie away this week. Oh. So why don't we together right now just pick uh, an ink that sells really well so we don't run out of it and tell people right now to get it and we'll make up a code too right here yes. right now. We've already done Emerald of Chivalry. Let's do an Ink Studio. Buttered buttered you popcorn. were just talking about Ink Studio. Have an Ink Studio. Know. I don't know what stock of any Ink Studio that we might have. We have plenty really of 123s. One. Probably 123 would be okay. Or how about we go how about we go with a definite and do like uh, haha or neku yanagi. We could do that. Let's do uh, again, let me double check. Oh, I know we've got plenty of those. Probably, I'm sure. 
Nikko Yanagi would be good. Right. That's a great color. I've been using that a little bit. Um, All right, let's just go with the code Neko, N-E-K-O. And you will get a free sample of Sailor Manyo Neko Yanagi. Oh you yeah, type we have, in we're well stocked on N-E-K-O during your checkout within between now and a week from now, which will be, uh, mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and do Thursday, uh, Friday of the next week. So. Yeah, so Friday, is, so starting on, oh, I'm in the wrong month on my calendar, starting on the 8th, <laughs> September 8th, 2023, to September 15th, 2023. There you go. Use Neko, and if you're already placing an order, you'll get that free sample. Yep, and get your, so, yeah. type in Neko and get your Yonagi. Get your Nagi. Get your Nagi on. I don't know. Nice. All right, there you go, enjoy. Cool. All right, so since we have a little extra time in here, we're going to throw in a hypothetical question. Why not? We haven't done one of those in a while. just researched and found. So, um, Drew, I know you like video games. What gives so you that idea? This will be primarily for you, but I will try to chime in where I can. Okay. I've given zero thought to what my answer will be. Same. All right. What video game would you choose if you had to live for a year in that video game? Um, that's not a t super difficult one because I'm lazy and don't like to make life hard for myself. So <laughs> I would probably go with something similar to Mass Effect, something sci-fi where, um, now granted, uh, there are certain, you know, there are, there are racial components to the world at this point because lots of species are, you know, trying mm. to get along together. But as far as Earth goes, things are mostly pleasant. Uh, high technology, easy, convenient life. Uh, I would definitely want to be in the future with space travel and, really? you know, longer lifespans and things like that. Yeah, for sure. You wouldn't do like Red Dead Redemption or Heck something? Heck no. Do you know like... how much things... <laughs> Stink back there, man. <laughs> Golly, no way. No air conditioning. Can you huh. smell in this game? I guess if you're like living in the if game you're environment. you're in it, yeah. If you're in it, I guess you would smell it, huh? Yeah, and I'm, I'm fully immersed, man. Okay. No. I How do you know the future is going to smell good? In like a sci-fi scenario. Everything's everything, better. Everything's I feel better. like everything's going to smell burnt. No, here's the thing about Mass Effect. Mass Effect kind of takes uh, a page from Star Trek and envisions a future that's not apocalyptic, where humanity hasn't oh. completely destroyed itself. Well, that's so, a very optimistic view of it. We we have made contact with life on other planets. We are establishing establishing ourselves in an mm. interplanetary council. You know, we're we're working on that. We've we got our focuses across the galaxy not just on earth so i feel mm. like you know things on earth mu must be like you know better so uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna say mass effect yeah, i could probably think longer and harder and come up with something else there are certain games that certainly there would might be more fun for a little while mm. but i wouldn't want to live there maybe 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 visit for mm. a day but no uh i think that um well i'm assuming here that you like have you would have whatever superhuman abilities would be in the game this wouldn't just be like you you would be like, oh, okay, like a the, fully operable character within like the, the main game. character. Okay, let so me you think. wouldn't just be like, because most video games, if you just got inserted into it, you would just, you would die immediately because oh, you don't fit the environment. 100%. You know? Yeah, I can't think of, you know, a game that, uh, like, everything just seems so difficult. There's always, <laughs> always so many challenges, and doesn't have to be. Yeah, I don't. All of these games are like there's there's some big like somebody trying to destroy the planet, and granted that's happening in Mass Effect as well. Mm. But I mean that's kind of happening on Earth as well. <laughs> like let's see. Oh man, I'm getting depressed. Uh, Anim Animal Crossing. How about that? Animal, there's oh, no wouldn't that enemies. Just be peaceful. Yeah. How pleasant would that be? That Everybody's would be happy. That would be nice. They just cheer each other on and do yoga and. You know, that would be very pleasant. That would be nice. Now, you could also, there are plenty of Star Wars games. There are a lot of Star Wars that games. That would be cool. That would be pretty fun, but that also would... hazardous. That's a pretty hazardous environment to if, live in. If you're in the game, yes. Yeah. If you're just rando person, rando Calrissian, if you were. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. So I guess, yeah, if you're the main character of the game, I mean, I'd be screwed either way because, like, mm. you're always fighting and being attacked by things. So, yeah, yeah. In that regard, Mass Effect would be difficult. But mm. uh, you still get on a spaceship. You still get to speak with alien species, and you you got a shield. So as long as you're smart, you can you know get <laughs> shot up a little bit and not die from it. Fair enough. You know, explore adventure. You know, and uh, 
very little sunlight. So, is there little sunlight in the future? In space. In space, yeah. Not not a whole lot. Be no sunlight. A lot of recycled air. Unless you're near the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I think that. uh, Yeah, I can think about it a little bit more, but that that's where my brain goes. It would definitely. I would definitely want something in the future because I want conveniences. Mm. I want plumbing. I want sanitary conditions. (laughs) I want entertainment. I, you know, I don't want to get bored. Yeah. So I need I need a you know electronics in my hand. What video games would be boring? I feel like all of them would. Red be Dead would be boring. Pretty why? The, like, I haven't played this game. So you're just walking know. around on a horse. Like if you're actually in the game, like you have to just you have to camp. You, you have, drink, have to drink lots of coffee. You have to hunt. Ugh. <laughs> it's too much like work. Oh my god, no. Fair enough. And I would die so often. <laughs> I guess you would respawn, right? Yeah, but you'd if still in the video you'd still game. be killed again and again and again. Be very inconvenient, yeah. Ripped apart by bullets and animals mm, okay. every day. Yeah. That's it's a rough life. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I would choose Super Mario Odyssey. It just seems like a really just run around engaging throwing your hat. environment. Yeah. Yeah. The original one. The original one. So no, no, not Mario. Wait, 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 what am I thinking? Of? Super Mario Galaxy. That's oh, sorry. Galaxy. Gotcha. Galaxy. I mean, Odyssey is cool too. I could do either one, but Super Mario Galaxy would be really cool. You know, it's like a 3D kind of environment. You get to mm-hmm. jump between different little planets and stuff like that. It'd be somewhat disorienting, but I feel like it would be very fun, very you engaging can, environment. You can, you can split wood in Red Dead Redemption too. Ooh, that sounds fun. You can split wood. There's even a there's even a pretty long sequence where you build a house. Oh. I'm kind of into that. <laughs> Maybe I would like Red Dead Redemption. Maybe I should play that game. I don't know. It's like you you get like you have a you have a camp where you kind of where your gang members are there, and uh-huh. you can get like extra good guy points by doing chores like moving hay bales or bringing water from point A to point B or chopping wood. Um, and it's just like yeah, you just you get good good buddy points, you know, that the camp notices. You're supposed to donate money to the camp too. You got your okay. own money, but it's also you know, smiled upon, if that's a phrase, to mm-hmm. donate sure. money to the camp. So yeah, yeah it's one of those one of those chores, hmm. which I hate doing. But you know, I always I always play. Yeah, the, I, like doing chores virtually. No, well, <laughs> no, it takes so long because you pick up a hay bale and like you walk so slowly over to the other part. And hay bales are heavy. That, yeah, no, that 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 game is accurate. Like you don't, <laughs> there's nothing sped up in that game for you. Like no. when he gets up on a horse, he there we go. Uh, you know. <laughs> and if you go from that game to another game, we're just like whoop. Up on the horse, it's like, wait, why did he go so fast? That's Jarring. weird. Oh yeah, it is. Rachel plays a lot of Animal Crossing. She just yeah. rebooted her island, like scorched earth. And oh my god, restarting again. My yeah. wife downloaded a cooking game. She, she's back on that mm. horse. That's that's an old favorite of hers, back from okay. the Nintendo DS days. Oh yeah. She's like, Drew, Drew, do you think now. the Switch has cooking games? I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm sure, sure they do. It <laughs> and it yeah, does. And it for did. Sure. Yeah. That's so fun. she bought that. I got a little alert on my phone, and I was like, hope you enjoy it. And then like yeah. a couple hours later, get some expansion pack charge on my phone so she like, mm. bought some like you know oh it's the mexican food mm. expansion pack or something like that yeah you know what else is cool joseph so he really wants a steam deck he's saving up mm-hmm. to get one some of the games he, he he wants on there i'm like these look really cool i would want to play these too um i forget what they're called but he's got you know they're like you just build like ridiculous vehicles and it's like the the physics around them are pretty realistic for being kind of ridiculous so yeah you just get to build crazy stuff and then there's other ones where it's like it's like there's a world and you have to like basically destruct it so it's like a destruction type game but it's a very like accurate physics and stuff like that and i'm oh, like that's oh cool. that also looks really cool and fun. oh yeah so we'll see i would nice. want to live in those worlds but no the building stuff would be really fun i could get into like a building game he's got one called polybridge hmm so it's like you have to get like vehicles or whatever across a ravine or whatever, and you have certain supplies and it's got like a lot of physics involved. So you have to build a bridge with certain characteristics to be able to get the vehicle across. He has a lot of fun with that. He likes to sometimes like build a ramp and it just like launches the vehicle and as long as it makes it to the other side, that is cool. you accomplish your mission. But I'm like, I don't think that's quite the goal. Eh, creativity, but, yeah, problem creative. solving. So anyway, that's kind of fun. All so right. there you go. Hypothetical we got a little bit of a, a jump start on our next segment. Did we? Well, next segment is just what's happening. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'll let we, you kick it off then. We can officially begin. What's happening? Let's do it. 
All right. Well, first things first, Brian. What you got there, Drew? I got my Looks Sailor like got pen. Manyo Nuts <gasps> Pro Gear Slim. Wow. Very excited to have had this. I was eagerly awaiting its return. Uh, they're not going to be making any more. We still got a few. Yeah. But uh, we have received our final shipment. So wow. um, uh, I don't need to tell you that I did ink this up with buttered popcorn because I mean, the, uh, that yeah, matches pretty that, well. That is a great match. But obviously, the finial is what I love the most about this pen. It's oh, got yeah. a lovely little acorn, little nut. <laughs> Nuts. So got that, inked it up. I'm having a great time with it. Um, interesting thing about buttered popcorn, if you, as soon as you write with it, you can't, you can't see it super well, but it dries and becomes a little bit darker. It darkens up a little bit. As soon as it dries, dries yeah, yeah, it's really fun to write with. Mm. So enjoying that. Um, cleaned out one pen, added this back into the three. So, so you're still sticking to the three. Still sticking to the three. Look yes, sir. You. Look at you. Um, so a pretty busy weekend. Um, we had a uh, delayed uh, late birthday party for my mom because I was in San Francisco during her birthday party. So she mm. and my stepdad and my brother um, came over for a cookout at my house. Oh, fun. So I did burgers and dogs and um, that was that was nice. Uh, it, it was very, my brother commented that it was very like stereotypical Americana because, you know, here we are in, you know, you know, Virginia suburbia and, you know, we've got the grilling smells and we hear an ice cream truck go by. It's just <laughs> oh like, gosh, wow. I know it was very, very stereotypical, but. Uh, you just need a ball of eagle to fly over. I got it, right. right. <laughs> Some rocket pops. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, but the they were very, very greasy burgers. So I had a lot of fire. Oh, but hmm. it charred them up really nicely. Yeah. And I've never done that on purpose before. I don't even right. know. I wouldn't know how to do that if I wanted to. But it gave them a really, really delicious char. Hmm. And I really kind of want to do it again. But I don't know. Uh, all, all that happened was just I had too much grease and it just, you know. If you just don't clean your grill, it'll tend to do that. No, this was all drippings, though. All so active the drippings dri themselves were yeah. catching on fire? Yeah. Wow, yeah. Interesting. It's very greasy burgers. It was just the frozen stuff from uh, Kroger. Like nothing huh. nothing weird. But Interesting. Anyway, um, that was I mean, good. I'm um, not to purposely make that happen. Yeah, I don't need to do mine. Uh, but she seemed to enjoy it. Um, everybody had a good time and then um i did spend a little bit of time outside i had to because when because the temperature swung like 20 degrees this weekend sunday morning oh that was very nice day. it was it was it was good i i had to do it now it wasn't like morning morning it was like you know 10 um but it was still okay so i got i got out there because i needed to trim the hedges mm. um i've got hedges all along the front of my house and a little bit on the side oh, yeah you've talked about these for yeah quite some time right well i trim i'd have to trim them regularly because oh, okay. they you know i get off our our driveway is barely enough room for two cars to be side by side mm. um so i park to the left and that's where some of the shrubs are and when they get overgrown i have a hard time it's Getting it's through them, yeah. In your face, yeah. So it's a great reminder that I need to keep this thing under wraps. Yeah. So I went ahead and did that. Um, Are these tall? Like tall hedges? One of them is. Yeah? One of them is. One of them is like a, I guess it's a tree, maybe? It's not really. Some trees can be kind of tree, bush-like. Tree, yeah, it's, it's a bushy tree. Yeah. Um, so that just, I turned that into some sort of an orbulus situation. <laughs> Uh, an orbulus yeah. tree. I like. That. I got nervous though because as soon as I fired up the trimmer, I see a bird fly out. I'm like, oh no! Where were you? Where's your Where's your house? So I looked around. You know, I just took the took the top off, so I didn't I didn't yeah, get all up like in it. Getting deep in there. No, but I did notice there was a big clump of weeds, like a really thick clump of weeds, right next to two hmm. of my hedges. So I chopped that down, only to realize it was flowers that I just planted there a couple weeks ago. <laughs> You cut down your own flowers? Mm-hmm. Wow. That made me feel great. I'm sure it did. And as soon as I did it, I was like, oh, I was like, oh God, look at all these. <laughs> oh, no. God. Wow. Oh. Well, we'll see how resilient they are. Oh, my God. They're annuals, so they, they might they grow back. They might grow back. They might grow back. I don't know, but oh, my God. Wow. Mm. So stupid. And so now I've got, I've, I put one on one side of the stairs, one on the other side, so now I've just got one. My mom's come over and planted like black eyed Susans and other things like that, like around various parts of our property. Like she, she, she'll plant some stuff like along our woods and I'm like, it's not going to make it. Like I'm going to mow over that crap. Like I'm not yeah. going to, unless it's like actively flowering and I can tell that it's like a plant to save. 
I'm like, no. This was actively flowering. Really? Yep. So you, Beautiful magenta flowers. Oh my god! And I just wasn't paying attention to it. I oh just, man, I just. Well, that's why you knew immediately then. Oh yeah, they went everywhere. They were like, oh, oh gosh. So that was upsetting. Dumb, wow. dumb, 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 dumb. Well, um, my son Archer got invited to a slumber party, sleepover, whatever the kids are calling them these days. Okay. At his friend's house. So this is his first time doing that at someone else's house. Oh. But no, no, no. Sorry, no. At this friend's house, he's done it once. Okay. A couple times with another so friend. That's a big step. Yeah. Um, so we uh, he has like a little triceratops sleeping bag. <laughs> and he didn't ask, but we we're like, hey, how about we get you like a regular sleeping Proper bag? Proper sleeping know? bag, yeah. He he didn't he probably wouldn't care, but my wife and I were like, kids sleepovers, they will latch onto anything to poke fun at somebody about. So let's just take the triceratops out of the equation. Mm. Went to Target. They were all out of like the kids' sleeping bags. So we had to get them just like a regular like a one. Full size one. Because we were leaving to go there like in that moment, oh, yeah. so it was either go back to the house to get the Triceratops oh, or, or buy this had. one. But yeah. you know, it'll last. Well, he'll for, grow into it. Yeah, yeah, it'll last him forever. So went ahead and got that, dropped him off, and then we had a little bit of a date night, um, which was nice. We cool. before that we had to kill some time. We walked around the mall, did a little bit of light shopping, did some errands essentially. Yeah, Shannon realized that she should not be wearing her heels at the. It was an outdoor mall, uh, but she was like, um, so we went into Old Navy and she bought like some three dollar clearance sandals so nice. um uh then yeah we got to we got to go out to dinner so that was that was pleasant cool we don't often get to do that so do you all have like a go-to place for like no a dinner we don't do or? it enough to have a go-to place yeah, Rachel and I are kind of like that no too. we went to a place called red salt over in the far 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 west end that. um yeah. is it sushi and steak place okay um didn't get a steak because there was nothing cheaper than 40 dollars mm. and i'm like there are some meals that like continue to go up and taste as far as I can perceive steaks, not one of them. No, no. Like for me, like there is a very, very, the, the line where steak enters diminishing returns yeah. territory is like pretty, pretty low. Like, fair enough. I think that once you get past 20, they all taste the same. I've never had, like I've had a $40 steak before and sure. it's fine, but yeah. Eh. It's not Best steak I've ever had, I cook, I cook myself. And I don't know how to cook steak. I just, this was a Costco steak. I, I got hmm. a five pack of sirloins. Okay. Just, you know, sea salt on the grill. I just happened to cook it really well that time. Nice. Haven't cooked it that well since, but that was that one time. That was the best steak I've ever accidentally had. Accidentally cooked the best steak so you ever I'm, had. But I'm like, if I can accidentally do that, like, yeah. come on, how hard can it be? I'm not paying, I'm not paying somebody for that. So I just got sushi. It was fine. Okay. I, I also can't tell good sushi from bad sushi, so there's that too. <laughs> Sounds like you don't need to go to nice restaurants. I really don't. Because you're not getting what, I really don't. Not, you know, but, unless you it's know, the ambiance and all that kind of yeah, stuff. That's yeah, that's pretty much what we were doing. You sure, know, we're, sure. it's, it's a date night, so let's go to some place with nice lighting. That's essentially what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Which also can't exist in less nice, nice, restaurants. Nice yeah. lighting and, and, and dessert that comes in a big plate that has a little piece of dessert off to the side of the oh, giant see, plate. That makes like, me upset. I mean, it was a fine sized dessert, but why did it need to be on a big plate? Like presentation. I know. So, so we did that thing. We're kind of going through the motions. Paying for plate size and like, lighting. Yeah. Is this what date? <laughs> this is what dates are, right? I don't know. So we did that. It's like you're new at this. You've been mean, together like 20 years. Yeah, we don't. I mean, since since Archer, like we don't we don't go out just the two of us very often at all. Yeah, I mean, how would you really? Yeah, I mean, yeah. a lot of people have grandparents that watch the kids, and I I don't. We've never done that. Like mm. my mom has watched. Archer, like, you know, no more, like, fewer than 10 times, probably. No. Um, in the 10 years that we've mm. had him, oh, nine. So, I don't know. It's just, we're fine. We don't yeah. do that enough, but we probably should probably do it more. Anyway, um, we did that. Uh, next morning, <clears throat> um, we uh, got up, almost, we slept in. And then immediately went to get him, but loaded the dogs up into the car because they needed the baths. We went to pick up Archer. Of course, he was not ready at all. He, we needed to wait for him to get all his crap together. Got him in the car, went to get the dogs a bath. So we took them to this place called Dog Crazy, which is a dog store chain. Um, and they have one of these little dog washing stations, which I've been to once before. Hank mm -hmm. was okay. Felix was pretty terrible. You but like we wash your own dog. Yeah, at the station? you you pay oh. you pay. It's like a car wash where you get yeah the little, yeah a little self washing. You, you can switch what mode it is, shampoo, That's rinse, cool. whatever. I didn't know they had that for pets. Yeah, it's like it makes sense. Essentially, like a you know self car wash. Um, we figured we'd give it another chance, even though Felix was terrible. I had to take Archer to the bathroom at a grocery store near nearby, so I yeah. left Shannon with the dogs. She was going to get started. 
And when we come back from the bathroom, I see her off in the distance and she's got Felix in there and she turns and looks at me and the face of panic on her face was terrible. Like she, she heard the door open, I guess, and just looked and hoped it was me. And I see her, I'm like, Oh God, this dog is being terrible. And sure enough, I get over there and try to help her. And he's acting like a deer caught in a fence. I don't know. Just like freaking out, jumping and just flailing, like acting like a complete loon. So I did my best with him, but we just got him out of there and finished mm. finished Hank within the same time frame that we paid for. So they refunded okay. us the cost of one of them, but wow. man, he just was not having it. So that was dumb. We probably won't be doing that again. Um, Yikes. We might bring Hank there, but mm. uh, yeah, he was setting a good example for his son. His son just didn't want to listen. So after that, we then get a call from a neighborhood friend of Archer's that wants to take him to the uh, trampoline park. Wow. So we're like, okay, yeah, sure, come get him. So they came to get Archer. So he oh gets to go gosh. to Trampoline Park now. Man, this kid's living the living the good life. Here. And then we're like, well, that thing we got at the mall, we need to take that back. So we went to the mall again, did a return. You're just like running errands while yeah, he's having a blast. Yeah, yeah pretty mm-hmm. much. Um, and then... Uh, hashtag adulting. We did go by um, Tom Leonard's, though, for the first time in a long time. Okay. Archer, and got some crab legs. We went to get some uh, snow crab. Um, okay. So we, we did come back after nice. Archer was back, and we... Cook some crab legs that night. Okay, and uh, that was that was delightful. You know, just cool. any any vehicle for Old Bay and butter. Just mm. yes, please. That's right. Do you like crab legs? They're fine. Yeah, I don't dislike them, but you Rachel go... loves crab. Yeah, she loves it more than I don't love them. Mm. Does that make sense? I think they're fine, but yeah. I'm they're they're awfully inconvenient and kind of expensive. Yeah, so I don't like go out the, of my the, way. These to weren't them. bad. These were like. Um, Seven seven ninety nine a pound. Yeah, I so, guess if you cook it yourself, but like I don't. Oh yeah, buy them in a restaurant. They can get costly. Yeah, they get really expensive. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't ever want less than three pounds of crab legs. Like you gotta. Yeah. Yeah. You don't sure. get that in a restaurant. No. No. So no. Crab cake can. is like Rachel's favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. Crab cake's yeah. fantastic. I think it's fine. Yeah. I don't appreciate it enough. Yeah. So I don't go crazy. But it was good. Like you with steak. It's like yeah, I think it's good, but I'm not like. Yeah, I'm Kinda with you there. For it. Sure. I'm with you there. Okay. And then, of course, uh, there was the Labor Day cookout. Um, mm. That was on Monday. We went over to Josh and Jeffrey's house. They had a big old soiree. We got there early so I could swim and have it not be human soup. And I did. That was delightful. <laughs> Archer swam the entire five hours we were there. Six. Oh, my gosh. We were there from one to six. Um, I was exhausted after two. That's um, a lot of wetness. I wasn't in the pool that long. Archer was. He did yeah, not stop. That's what I'm saying. Um, but I was just exhausted after two hours. Like my my, I I was I had gotten some video game time in. Mm-hmm. Finished Assassin's Creed. Um, moved on to uh, Cyberpunk 2077. My brother let me borrow that, so I'm gonna try okay. that. Uh, I've been playing some video games, so I'm like, all right, you know what? I got my introvert charged up. So let's go. Let's go to the party. And I'm like, all right, I'm good, good, I'm good. And then two hours in, nothing. Wow. I had completely emptied my tank and wow. I just got tired. Mm. I just, and Shannon's just like, bah, 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 like just going, going, yeah, going. Yeah. She's loving it. She's getting energy. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> so funny. And man. So at the end of the night, I was just like, I felt like I had been doing physical activity all day. And mm. I wasn't, I was sitting around by a pool eating hot dogs and snacks. Wow. Like, but I just was so exhausted. So so funny. It was. I mean, I love. I love. I always friends. forget that you're that introverted. I do too. Yeah. Until that happens, I'm like, oh my god, yeah. Hmm. It just. It just. It, it. It depletes me. You know, and it's yeah. not. And I love, 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 love my friends. And it was. Sure. It was. It was the delight being there. It just. Mm-hmm. It just. You know, depletes me. You yeah. know, it's not like I don't enjoy it. You know, uh, it just depletes me in a way that it doesn't deplete her. So that mm-hmm. was interesting. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was. It was. A, it was a good day, and nice. you know. Came back, everybody was exhausted, just chilled out until it was bedtime for Archer and went to work. Um, we did finish uh, 30 Rock, completed that. We nice. finished up the last episode of that. We're going to probably start on Parks and Rec, and we're almost done with Succession, the final season of Succession, oh, okay. which I wasn't excited about because I hate everybody in that series. But You're not meant to like them. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> um, but I will say that something happened in the final season that was a pretty common thing for, you know, relationships, families, and a very common thing to see portrayed in movies and TVs. You know, very Mm -hmm. common action. Um, 
situation. But the way they handled it in this show, mm. despite it being a very, very common occurrence in lots mm. of movies, mm -hmm. was unlike any way I had seen this event presented hmm. ever before. Hmm. So in that moment, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm here for it. Wow, the, they won the, you over. It's, it's, the characters are still insufferable, <laughs> but <laughs> the the way they actually produced this show, mm. you know, to do something completely new within a, you know, somewhat, you know, normally predictable kind of sure. boundaries. I was like, wow, I, you don't expect to see something that new and interesting. I mean, at this point, yeah, to find any show with anything new is like. Exactly. Kind and, of I, and I would love to tell you more, but it's still on. So I'm not going to spoil anything. Sure, but yeah, sure. it's definitely, I was like, oh my God, that was, huh. that was fresh. Okay. That was very fresh filmmaking. Nice. Not unlike six, not unlike a, um, like Severance. Severance, like yeah. totally new. Like that would like, yeah. You like seeing freshness, especially, Absolutely. you know, and I'm a huge sucker for, I will just eat up any Star Wars or Marvel content. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Feed it to me. I'm, I'm, I'm a fanboy. I'm part of the problem with them churning out remakes and reimagining. So, yeah. oops, sorry about it. But, <laughs> That's coming from me, who will ab you know yeah. ravenously consume remakes and you know yeah. readaptations. I love love seeing fresh stuff like this. Yeah. So that is great. Wow, cool. All right, um, I had a pretty low key weekend. It's weird. We had we had a three day weekend, obviously with Labor Day and whatnot. And I was sitting down to write my notes on what I did. And I'm like, this has got to be one of the most boring what's happening updates I've ever had. It's not that I didn't do anything. Some of it is like I kind of relaxed on Saturday. The weather was beautiful, but I was just, just really dumb. But I was like not all that motivated to be outside for some reason. Great. Which is weird for me. I love but being I was just not motivated to be outside. And, yeah, it was weird. Um, but I stayed kind of low key. We did a lot of like cleaning up around the house and laundry and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Which like takes My a lot. My mom visited on Saturday, remember? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to know how much dog hair is currently on the floor, despite <laughs> me having deep cleaned on Saturday? Yeah. A ton. It's never ending. Um, so yeah, did that, you know, changed out some of our decor because summer is ending. So Ellie got into that. So she- Did the fall target birds come out? The birds are in in uh, migration. <laughs> so <laughs> some of the birds, the, the seasons for the birds are starting to blend together a little bit because Rachel has just- so many of these target birds that some of them are like they can they can work in summer or fall or you know they they can transition over so uh it makes it very interesting because we've tried to like have bins for our decor which mostly birds um which is like based on the season you know because we got to like store them in our little attic little side attic thing so we try to label them but now it's just like i'm looking in there and it's like i can't tell what's spring and fall and summer and all this so she's like, yeah, I don't know anymore. Just whatever, put it in a bin and get it upstairs. So uh, that was happening. But I don't know, that's kind of cool. Like the kids, no, mostly Ellie gets kind of into it. So she was like helping with some of that stuff. And I was like, wow, the kids can like do stuff like for real. So that's pretty fun. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've had that pine bench that I have not touched in a while. Yeah. Well, you I touched it, touched it. All right. Didn't do a ton, but I um, finally got like the the mortise all finished out. So now like the, the legs fully fit on. It's like I haven't like actually um, mortise is fix them in place. Is the post that goes in the hole, right? So the tenon is the post part. Okay. The mortise is the hole. The hole. Okay. Yeah. So it's a mortise and tenon together. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, that, that's I finished mortising out because like these tenons are like this. It's like inch and a half to two inches or something by like eight inches. And this is like the support Huge beam chunks. that goes below the seat? Yeah, it's basically like a big bench with two legs. That's mm -hmm. all. Yeah. It's not that complicated. Um, but yeah, basically I was doing a mortise and tenon for the, the legs to sit into the bench thing. So it's all, you won't see any of the joints, but it'll just make for a stronger bench. So it know? won't have anything running like as a support below the seat? No. Oh, okay. Just two legs. Yeah, I guess That's you wouldn't all. need it if it's... It's just like a sitting bench, you know? So we're going to have it like probably at the foot of our bed if nice. Rachel even likes it. I just started making it without really asking her too much. I try to ask her about like what furniture she wants me to build. She's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. whatever. Is the, uh, is some the, things she cares, some things she doesn't. Is that C table getting use? Yeah. Nice. Every day. Yeah? Oh, yeah. 
That's awesome. Yeah. That's got to be a cool feeling seeing something Absolutely. something that you made fully integrated into the all the all the furniture I made for the house is like in the house in use. Nice. Yeah. So like the only problem is I mean if Rachel had a more uh specific like design vision mm -hmm. it would probably you know be more contentious but me i'm like i don't want to make the same thing i've already made so like nothing matches anything so it's like i'm like oh it'd be kind of cool to like make a c table with like raw steel legs and uh i don't know i've got hunter and mahogany let's make a hunter and mahogany top and then i have like a natural edged like cookie slab walnut end table. And I did that. And then I was like, I kind of want to, I've got this slab of maple. Let's do a maple end table as well. And that's all in the same room, you know? So it's like, everything's wildly inconsistent. So I don't know. She's not picky about it. And I just get to make whatever the heck I feel like. And as long as it has a function, she's happy. So I don't know, it's cool. I have lots of different woods and I like to make different things. So that's the latest thing. So I've yet to make a piece of furniture technically out of that pine. This is the pine that I like got out of the spice factory, the sour spice factory. Mm -hmm. It's from like the 18, mid 1800s. It was like caked with crap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looked just absolutely disgusting. But I'm trying to leave it in like, I'm taking off all the gross stuff, but it's got like old rusty nail holes in it and you know, kind of like some chunks taken out of it and stuff That's like that. So cool. I'm like trying to kind of leave it rustic yeah. without making it look like it's gross right you, um, you don't you want to be able to bring it into the bedroom put it at the foot of your bed and not yeah. have rachel tell you a week later yeah that needs to go right but i'm torn because like i don't really love the look of pine so much but it's like an old growth pine so it's like it's it's nicer looking than like it doesn't look like two by fours from Home right Depot or something but still it's like that yellowy light colored kind of look yeah so i'm debating about like antiquing it or just you know something like that staining it some maybe but well i, I think know. that the this particular piece the it's its story is what matters not the look yeah. so much like no well, matter thinking, what it looks yeah. like you're gonna be able to tell yeah. where it came from and how yeah. old it is like well, i was debating about trying to like maybe age it a little well, it's funny because it's really old wood but i i i cut all the old looking stuff off of it yeah. so it looks really clean and fresh now you would never know that it's that old mm -hmm. um so i'm debating about like sort of antiquing it again to make it look somewhat of what it did look like, but not being actually like caked up disgustingness right. from a factory floor. Yeah, if you can um, do it without it but looking like- But like darkening it up a little bit, yeah. aging it a bit. So I don't know. I'm, I don't know exactly how to do that on pine. So I'm kind of interested in to the challenge of doing that. Mm. You know, cause we've done like some boards and stuff that I've had here. You whip it with I've a like chain? Distressed it. I mean, it would kind of fit the vibe a little bit. So I don't know, I'm torn about that. Because it has a little bit of distressing to it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like fake it too much though. Yeah. So could, I don't you, know. could you we'll test see. it somewhere else? Like, Yeah. I mean, I've got other pieces that I can even use of that wood and I can, you know, spec it out and I'd sort of test it out and stuff. So I don't know. But I, you've come this far. You don't want to accidentally like do it too much. I don't want to like ruin it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, if it's like just the color, like the finish or something like that, I mean, it's like a three inch thick bench. Ooh, that's going to be heavy. So it's going to be, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Probably weighs probably 60 pounds maybe. So it's pretty, pretty girthy. But, you know, it's like if I try staining it and it just looks terrible, I can just strip it off and it would, you wouldn't really notice. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I might take the risk. We'll see. Um, but progress was made. Um, and I just like cleaned up my shop a lot. A lot of stuff I did was just like cleaning up, organizing, and it's just not that exciting. But, I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, it was the last, so at least where we are locally here, basically like all the pools around here, unless it's like a private pool, but like all the all the public pools, they basically open on Memorial Day and they close on Labor Day. Mm -hmm. So this was like the last chance to go to the pool. My parents have this little pool in their little condo area or whatever. So we went there. Uh, Rachel was just like not feeling it. You know, and she was like, I think it's going to be too cold. You know, she, and she was like, was not really feeling like going out. And I was like, I'm not going to push it. It's like, I'll take the kids over. We'll have a good time. So that was on Saturday. And she made a good call, you know, because like we'd had some nights where it like got down into the 50s. And I was like, how much of a difference is that really going to make? It kind of made a difference. It was like, cold. It had a little bit of a bite to Ooh. it, but it was like 90 degrees outside. Yeah. So it was like, it was really hot in the sun, but then you're in the pool and it's like, oh, it's got some bite. But it's like, I know Rachel, 
she just wouldn't she would not have been into that oh no i'm uh, no I'm, I'm the same way like shannon was really? making fun of me so much getting into the pool on on labor day because okay and josh jeffries is heated and cooled like they can they can control oh, wow. the temperature okay. of this thing okay so it was like 80 some degrees oh, and wow. i was still like <laughs> you know oh my gosh wow <laughs> okay okay wow and she is just okay. making fun of me i'm just like leave me alone go swim wow i'm getting it at my own pace oh that's really funny it's like this whole running joke with Rachel because like growing up, her sister was always like, they just jump right in. And Rachel's like, takes like 30 minutes to ease into the pool. Yeah. To like get used to it. That's so me. The the running joke is like, she's, she like will kind of dip her foot in and be like, oh, this is too cold. And it's always like, well, get in. You'll get used to it. That's right. always like that. Yeah, you'll, you'll get used to, used to it. And she's like, I will never get used to it. <laughs> yeah, well, well I, I, a little bit of a callback. Shannon was making fun of me while I was getting in. She's like, because I have very sensitive skin. Like she can't like even touch me a little mm. bit without me be like, ha, ah, like getting like tickled by it. And she was making fun of me and saying, you know, I think all of your taste buds went into your skin sensitivity. <laughs> Because, because, <laughs> like I said, like I can't really, you know, I'm like, right. I can't really taste the difference between, you know, subtle flavor mm. notes. Mm. But I'm very sensitive. Like, if yeah. if, if, I, if I'm the sleeping huh. and the fan is making one of my hairs wiggle a little bit, I'm just like, oh god! Oh my you gosh! Know, wow! I, I can't, I can't deal with it. Wow! Um, Interesting. Like, if Shannon just like runs a finger across my shoulder or something, I'm like, oh god! And I have to <laughs> scratch it. But if she like, you know, you know, rub her whole hand, that's fine. That doesn't bother me. But like, tiny, tiny little things. Mm. Duh. Yeah. And my brother's the same way. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. We're both like that. Huh. Um, but uh, yeah. So I'm sure she never does that to really annoy you, right? Oh, golly. <laughs> she just. Oh, man. That's any, great. Any, any, any opportunity. Um, but it was cool. So we went, we went and did that. And, um, you know, that was all well and good. And it's like, I was already in my bathing suit. I was hot. I kind of needed a shower anyway. So I was like, you know, I've just had, you know, it's like, I, I don't wash my cars all that regularly, but it was just like, you know, I've got a few hours of sunlight here. I was like, hey, Ellie, you feel like wa helping me wash the cars? And she was like, yeah, she was on board. Wow. So I was like, you know what? If she rinses and I do all the brushing, we could we could crank these out. So I don't know, I just got on a roll. Like I'm not that motivated to work on car stuff that often, but when I do, I'm like, yeah, let's do it upright. So we washed me and Rachel's car. I also have a pickup truck as well. So we washed all three vehicles. And then after that, I was like, you know, I don't think I've waxed either of our cars in like a couple of years. It's I've like never waxed really mine. It. Yeah. It, you don't don't it you really have to needs. have a garage for that? You just don't want it to be in direct sunlight. So yeah, I don't have that option. It. Yeah. So, you know, if you do it at like dusk, depending on like where yeah. the light comes in. Um, yeah. So I ended up waxing both me and her cars. Wow. And then I vacuumed out the insides and stuff like that. Wow. Because you know, it was just like, it had been a while. And it's like, yeah, it's like Dang. once you get past a certain point, you're like, yeah, I really want to make this like really nice and drivable. Very and cool. Stuff. So that felt good. Yeah. It ended up taking me like five hours. To yeah, I've never all. waxed a car before. It's not that bad. It depends on what you use. Yeah. But these days they have like this, it's almost like a goopy paste. You know, it's like in a mm -hmm. bottle, you squeeze it out. You kind of just rub it on. You let it sit. Let it dry for 10, 15 minutes yeah. and wipe it off with a microfiber cloth. Yeah. That's it. It's really not that bad. But yeah. it's a pretty good upper body workout, especially if you do two vehicles. Yeah. So, so does Ellie, does Ellie get day. some sort of like uh, allowance reward? Yeah, I'll pay her. Yeah. I'll pay nice. her per car. Yeah. Nice. My kids don't have a regular allowance. And meanwhile, Joseph's um, but, like, oh, dang it. I still want my Steam Deck, but I'm not waxing cars. He knows the deal. He's got the opportunity. Yeah. I always offer to him, but you know. I told Arthur the same him thing. to help wax, wash the cars. I told him like, like, it'd be no. nice if you leaf blew the deck before uh, Grandma's birthday mm -hmm. party. And yeah. He didn't do it. And he's like, I want the Ninja Turtle van. I'm like, well, yeah. Aaron Carter. You can earn it. I mean, I'm a big proponent of like, having your kids feel the consequences of their own choices. So like making them the offer, you know, educating them, sharing whatever, motivating them, but I'm not gonna pester my kids to help with that stuff. You know, if there's certain things that are like really important to do, I'll be yeah. like, I don't care that you don't wanna do it, we're doing it. But with stuff like that, it's kind of like, well, the last thing I wanna do is have you be a pain in the butt and be whining right, all the time right. while I'm forcing you to do something. Like, oh, yeah. Forget that. And but if, then, it's not, if it's not their idea, there's gonna it's gonna be yeah. If they're not on board with it, right? Eventually, I mean, I've had a number of things like that where the kids are not that into it. But then, and you know, we just stay consistent, and they want this thing, and I'm like, cool. Yeah. Well, how much money do you have? You know, right. it's like, well, I mean, we'll do like birthdays and Christmas, like stuff like that. But outside of that, I'm like, I mean, I'll buy your clothes, I'll buy your food, stuff like yeah. that. But like, 
I'm not going to buy you just toys all the time. We'll buy like family things, board games and yeah. you know certain video games and stuff like that that we'll all share. We'll buy those. But when it comes to just like their stuff that they're into, I'm like, you have many opportunities to earn that money. So it's fully within their control. And when they're motivated, they'll do it. And when they're not, they won't. Yeah, we've backed why. off on that. We don't do it as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if he's had like a really good week, we might be like, all right, well, you've earned five points. Mm -hmm. If you want, we can zero that out and we'll get mm -hmm. you this thing as though, you, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, like he wants the, like the Ninja Turtle van, right? And it's pretty substantial. I, I mean, yeah, it's a, yeah. 40, 40 bucks. I'm like, we're not mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah. Um, so he's got 20, but he's not working for the rest. And I'm like, Archer, toys don't stay around at Target for as long as they used to. Yeah. Like, like I'm you do this on your own time, but I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Th like when the next movie comes out and they change out the end cap like it's sorry charlie they don't stay around like they, those yeah. things cycle through man it's a good life lesson though so, and he might miss out on it yep that's happened with joseph joseph he's he's been a consistently a lego kid yeah still loves it um and he knows that he knows the deal now if there's a certain set that he wants he knows it's not going to be around that long no. so he'll get on it and focus every focus his energy until he gets it and then he's not motivated anymore. yeah so it's yeah. you know it's very, very. You do that, or you pay that pay the uh, the the price after it gets discontinued, which is like you know. He hasn't done that with like any full sets, but he'll do that with certain minifigures. You know, he goes to like mm -hmm. Bricklink and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, he's got one um, Django Fett minifigure mm -hmm. right now that's worth like two hundred dollars. It's wow. just like super in demand. Wow, and it's not that different than other ones, but he just happened to buy the set that I guess is valuable at some point. This was several years ago, so he's he's debating about maybe selling that minifigure so that he can cash it in and get some other stuff. And I'm you can like, get store credit at bricks and minifigs. Yeah. Yeah. But he's thinking about like actually selling it himself, like on Bricklink or something, oh. try and get the most he can for it. But we're, we're, we're talking about it. I'm like, it's speculation. You know, you never know what set's going to do. Yeah. You know, so he's not like trying to buy for an investment or whatever. I've been, I was telling Archer like, Hey, you've got so many Legos. You could trade some of these into bricks and minifigs and get a store credit. Yeah. You're just trying to like have him like, cycle through some stuff rather than just accumulating and accumulating yeah, it really adds up but you know what he did instead because mm. i was telling him like hey maybe get some of your minifigs that you have the full sets of and you mm -hmm. can trade those in he's like oh i got a better idea i'm like okay cool goes upstairs takes apart all of his minifigs puts them all separated into different trays of his organizers heads bodies <laughs> legs everything look i made a build your own minifig thing i'm like Oh my gosh. I was like, so he that's just mixed everything up. I was like, that's awesome, buddy. He's like, look, I can make anybody now. You should make your own. I'm like, oh my God. So my my like organizer thing, I'm like, if I want them all like set up, organized, all yeah. their accessories matching, and I'm just have to be like, mm, that's awesome, buddy. Good job. Oh, like so tough. Oh my God. Joseph has several Lego. I mean, it used to be that like Lego sets, he would build it once and then immediately tear it apart and Frankenstein it with other things. Oh so like, man. Somewhere it's in. It's so hard. He's got Benny's spaceship in there somewhere. Yes. He's got the Millennium Falcon oh. in there somewhere. Some of them lasted longer That's than so others, crushing. but most everything has become just a part of absorbed into the amoeba of I his know. Lego set. Oh. But, you know. Yeah, let them do their own thing. He's had certain things where he's tried to rebuild the sets, and he knows how hard it is. So. Yeah. But it's too late. It's already all mixed up. So we'll see. Um, and then uh, we also, we watched the movie Clue. Oh. Which I love that movie. So good. I watched it a bunch, yeah, growing up. Rachel genuinely couldn't remember if she'd seen it before, which is shocking because she remembers everything. Mm -hmm. I think she's seen it. I think her and I have seen it together, but I couldn't remember when. But either way, I was like, it was like borderline. I was like, well, it is like murder themed you know but it's like i remember the movie being pretty satirical oh, and yeah. kind of goofy very you know and it's not like gory at all it's it's rated pg yeah well which eight, i had to look at the date 80s pg is it's 85 which would have been i think after the pg-13 came into existence right because it was le it was a uh, temple of doom indiana jones that was like jump the shark and that's when they started doing the pg-13 mm, that was 84 that was 84 so it was after that, but I don't know if they were like fully implementing yeah. the PG thirteen. I mean, no, thing. Clue's totally fine. It's, it's Clue, pretty good. Clue the got, kids are Clue got network play, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty great. They're like all the heavily laced puns and stuff like oh, yeah. that. 
the kids were eating. Yeah, um, Clue holds up well. I watched it last year. Yeah, it's really good. So I'm like, I'm trying to think of movies like that that I remembered liking as a kid, you know, but that my kids are at that age where it's like, they'd probably be okay with that, but they're starting to get like borderline with like innuendo and mm-hmm. some of these other things where I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if it's okay to watch it with the kids, you know? Mm-hmm. So things like Robin Hood Men in Tights, you know, and some of that like- That one's pretty crass. Some of that doesn't age so well, yeah. or it's like the references are like very 90s. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know if they would really get some yeah. of those. So there's there's things like that where like, I kind of like to watch some of these with them. I don't know. I think Princess Bride might be on the docket pretty soon. Oh yeah, with the kids. that one's that one's feel safe. I feel good with the other one, but that and they're not ready for this yet. But the movie Airplane mm-hmm. and like the Naked Gun series and stuff like that. Naked Gun is such a fantastic movie. They would love Naked there, Gun. There is they a, love just those just dad joke level puns. Yeah. Oh, like Naked Gun's full of them. There, yeah. there is there's a topless bit in that one though, so you'd have to skip over that. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, and honestly, like there's like you know you got Ghostbusters in there. Like that's that's hilarious. That's got some solid comedy in yeah, it. Yeah. Interesting. And then um, I don't know if they would be. Well, they might. I don't know. Or anything, like, or like the Great Outdoors with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. Mm. Oh my God, that one's so funny. Okay, that's okay. my favorite uh, John Candy movie. They don't really do that style anymore, do they? Just that like over the top kind of goofy kind of stuff. I don't know. Maybe they I don't do. really. I, just, I don't really pursue. I don't. I don't like. I like. Do they still do that? I, I like know. Bridesmaids, but other than that, there hasn't been like a modern comedy that I've really loved. Mm, okay. Like I don't know. What's good for like? preteen teenagers maybe y'all have some suggestions yeah but like family movies for preteen teenagers anything that's like somewhat sarcastic it's got some snarkiness to it lots of puns dad joke type things they would be into that so i don't know i'm trying to think about that kind of stuff some of these are like movies like i haven't personally watched these things in a long time so i'm like i don't remember how great out- appropriate this great outdoors be, or, is so good i don't know if i've seen the great outdoors well it's great because john candy doesn't play a goof He's like mm. the straight man, and Aykroyd is the annoying huh. like goof. Okay, and it's yeah, he's excellent. I mean, they're okay. both excellent. They're both amazing. It's okay. Yeah, I love that one a lot. That was a favorite when I was a kid. Okay, and of course, Ghostbusters is perfect in every way, shape, and form. I'm trying to think of like Jim Carrey movies too. Those are way over the top. Some like, of those are a bit much. Yeah. Great, Great Outdoors is like just the pinnacle of comedy like it's 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 so up there it's like wow, they just okay. do everything right J- jim carrey he's funny but um i would i would i would do tommy boy before any sort of jim carrey movie mm, like okay. tommy boy took what planes trains and automobiles invented mm. and just polished it yeah to a mm. mirror shine okay cool i'll look into that um, yeah, so that was cool. And then, uh, yeah, we had our own little Labor Day thing. My aunt, who's also my godmother, she was strolling through. She lives down in Florida and has got family, all my family's from up north. So they're just like driving up the coast and visiting everybody on the coast and working their way up. So they were in town and just happened to work out for Labor Day. So we had 12 people over, which we never, <coughs> we like other than maybe Thanksgiving, we never have that many people over our house. So. It wasn't that bad though. We just grilled, just burgers, hot dogs, that kind of thing. So it was same kind of thing. It was yeah. like felt very American Labor Day, yeah. You know that kind of a thing. But no hay rides. It worked out. No hay rides this time. <laughs> it was pretty stinking hot out. So I was sweating it up pretty good by the grill. But you know it all worked out pretty well. So just get to visit family, cleaning the house, doing that kind of stuff. It was a good time had by all. All right, that's all we got for the what's happening. We got company updates, and then we're about wrapped up. All right, so really just one company update that I could think of. We got our next video here, which is a Drew special on best looking nibs. Scientifically so, speaking. Yes, very official, not at all subjective. So you can do check that one out. And then next week, we're gonna have the second rendition of our Fountain Pen Hall of Fame. Who's next? We will be inducting the dragon the pen, pen from Jin Hao. We, one can only surmise what it may be. So take your get, take your best guesses. It's already shot. It's already done. So not changing it at this point. But we're not going to be pumping them out like every couple of weeks like this. This is just to kind of get it started. I don't even know when I'm going to do the next one. So it might not while. might not even be in 2023. It might not. I don't know. We'll have to see. We're testing it out. But anyway, that'll be coming. So yeah, look forward to that. It's not really a whole lot else going on. We're just kind of 
school's in session now and we're just settling in to the fall season. So yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. So we'll go ahead and wrap this sucker up. Well, I want to thank you all for watching. Please leave us some feedback. Let us know how we're doing. Give us comments, ask us questions, all that. Uh, you can check out gulepens.com, our official sponsor of ourselves for the fountain pen, ink, and paper needs that you may have. Like and subscribe to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all those places. And my fun fact today is actually about the movie Clue. Oh. So I don't know if you remember this or which version you may have seen, but they have alternate endings oh, yes. to the movie Clue. Yes. So apparently there's three endings. And if you watch like the DVD of it, you can you can either choose to have an ending selected at random for you, or you can watch all three. And it shows you basically like just the normal thing all the way through. And mm -hmm. then it's like, well, that's how it could have happened. But how about this? You right. know, and it does that a couple of times. That's, that's the one I'm familiar with. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I've always seen it too, especially like I remember watching it a lot on TV mm -hmm. when I was younger. So apparently when it was released, and this is a little bit before our time, we were in diapers when this movie was released. But those of you may have seen it in the theaters, I don't know. But apparently when they originally released the movie, they actually played three separate endings in the theaters, but didn't tell anybody that there were different endings as part of the whole theme of like, you know, the whole point Who of the it? game clue is yeah. to guess who killed what, where, and with what nice. weapon. So as part of the buzz of the movie, people actually saw different endings and it created this whole like mystery around who actually did it. And that was intentional, like as a marketing kind of gimmick on their part. And I was like, that's really fun. But anyway, yeah. That is awesome. I don't think it was like a smashing commercial success. I think it was well received. Huge cult success though. But like since then, yeah. you know, and it's like pretty star-studded cast too. Like it's, in my opinion, it's, it's held up pretty well over time. It's a lot of people's favorite Tim Curry performance. Oh, definitely for me, yeah. This is so good. There's so many, and like Christopher Lloyd's in it and Rachel was like, oh, yeah. is that Christopher Lloyd? And like, yeah, Michael McKean's in it too. Yeah. Now, especially having watched like Better Call Saul and all that, it's like, oh, Michael McKean, like I forgot about him, you know? But yeah. I, I, I for some stupid reason, there's this bad movie called Congo about some just like awful mm. CG super gorillas that attack people in the jungle. I think I've seen part of and that. I, I, I love Tim Curry in that so much. <laughs> like. I don't know why. It's not a good mm. movie, but it, it holds a special place in my heart. Okay. And I love Tim Curry's performance in that one. I he's also like... super good in Home Alone 2. I haven't seen Home Alone 2 oh, in so man. long. Oh, man. He's like the, ho the hotel manager that keeps trying to chase down oh, Kevin. Okay. Oh, he's so good. Okay. Yeah. He's good. He's good. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. So there's your fun fact about Clue. Uh, anyway, thanks for spending time with us today. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching and right on.